HSLDA fights hard for your right to homeschool. Join HSLDA to protect your freedom, your family, and your future. Thank you for the opportunity just to share a little bit about what HSLDA is all about. And I wanted to show you a quick slide of our outreach team to tell you a little bit about what we're up to up at HSLDA. Take a look. Uh, and while I'm here, I want to just announce a couple of people who are here on our staff. The beautiful Rach Rochelle Somerville is here. Would you wave to her? She's our special needs expert at HSLDA. We have the beautiful Natalie Mack, who is our military outreach coordinator expert. And then we have Anita Gibson, who is our team lead. She's uh, the leader of our high school department. Let's give her a hand. And then we also have the beautiful Carla Fuller, who is here, and she is also an educational consultant today. Let's give her a hand. And I believe, did I miss anyone from HSLDA? So I just want to thank you so much for the opportunity to share. We are working very hard to make homeschool impossible for all. So take a look at our slide. White banana is one of the most... All right. Praise the Lord. Okay. So these are some of the things that we provide, and you'll feel, find out more later. Not only do we have educational consultants, but we have resources, lots and lots of resources. We have the legal answers, representation, lobbying present, as well as supporting the homeschool community. We're going to help you save time and money. Take a look at our team. Heather Fromack is our director of the outreach as well as uh, consultant services. Christy Horner, she is our administrative program manager. We are excited to have Anita Gibson, who is also advising our outreach team, myself, Natalie Mack, and, and uh, for Spanish speaking, we have the beautiful Kareem Murato. So we're very excited about everything that's possible at HSLDA. We have a team of what we call guidance counselors, if you will. That's what we like to call ourselves. And so this is our team of guidance counselors at HSLDA. So we're just a call away with all the answers. We're keeping our ear to the ground of not only what's going on in Maryland, but what's going on worldwide in homeschooling. So we hope that you uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We also have an online academy that is just for AP classes. If you're interested in AP classes, we're approved by uh, College Board to uh, host these AP classes, and we uh, have one of the highest uh, uh, return rate on the AP class with more students scoring the four or five on the AP exam. So we're very excited about that. So without further ado, I hope that you'll visit our table. We have a uh, expert here from HSLDA out in the vending hall. So thank you so very much. And the way I close is this, any question, any time, anything homeschooling, members get trusted advice and resources for just 35 cents a day. So God bless you and thanks. thank you so much for having us. And we're excited about this partnership. ready to get it really, really started. Opening session is getting ready to get started. We have Anita Gibson that will be coming up for that. And if you haven't, if you're just coming in, make sure that you go to scahomeschool.net to pull up the agenda for today or look in your swag bag. Thank you, Natalie. You are welcome. All right, so this is our opening session. I'm so glad you guys are here. We've done our thank yous. I want you to know what our goal is for today. Because we do, so many of us do these conferences all the time, right? And we go and we sit for a whole day and we have a book full of notes that go in a closet that we find the next year because we never did anything with them. <laughs> you, know those, you know those notebooks? Well, that's not this conference, okay? Our goal, we want you to not feel also overwhelmed when you walk out. Like, my goodness, that was so much information. Where do I begin? 
We want you, our goal is for you to come away with two or three nuggets. <laughs> two or three nuggets that you can implement in your school today. That's the goal. So don't get overwhelmed. Don't listen to all the information. Ask God, what is it I'm supposed to remember for my home school? That's our goal. So that you will be blessed. Some of you are have never homeschooled. Some of you are just starting to homeschool. Some of you have homeschooled a long time. So there's different things that each of you need. But God knows what you need. And it's amazing. You know how a pastor preaches in the morning? And he says the same words, but everybody walks away with something different, right? It hits them in a special way. And so that's our hope today, that you will walk away uh, with some confirmation, some encouragement, and be ready uh, to homeschool. So the name of this conference is You Got This. Sometimes you have to tell yourself things even when you don't believe it. <laughs> because I know sometimes when people hear you got this, they're like, oh, no, I don't. I don't got this. <laughs> I can't even say that because that's not true. But we know as believers, there are many things that we speak that are the word, right? That we might not feel, but it doesn't mean they're not true. So anybody in here who's there's something in the back of your brain is like, no, I don't got this. I have no clue what to do. I am such a failure. My, my school year was horrible. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. I'm here today to say you got this, that a part of learning to homeschool is making mistakes. It's like, you know, for us, I, I have parents who, if they have to change their curriculum, they feel like a failure. I was like, that's the greatest thing you could do is to recognize something's not working. Why would you do a curriculum for a whole year that's not working? <laughs> but some of us are doing that. But I paid $100 for that math. You're going to figure this out. <laughs> right? No. It's okay. It's impossible to pick the right curriculum every time. It's impossible to know exactly how each child is going to respond. It's impossible to use the same curriculum with your first child, with your second child. Because they're all so different. And there's nothing wrong with them. That's the way they've been made. So you got this. I want you to say that with conviction. Are you ready? One, two, three. Yeah, because you're saying you to yourself. <laughs> you know, sometimes as a homeschool parent, you have to talk to yourself. Sometimes you have to go close the bathroom door and say, nobody's bleeding or dying. Do not bother me because I need a minute. Or there's going to be a problem around here. See, I, I'm going to be real with you guys. Homeschool is not this wonderful panacea with mommy sitting at the table and the kids sitting around her and everybody's cooperating. That's not homeschool. So if you're thinking, oh, I failed because my, my kids, you know, they didn't listen or, or they didn't get all the work in their, in their book. Okay. The whole point, even, even, yeah, okay. It's. So when it's all done and said, you know, you take a standardized test and I have parents they are like, oh, my gosh, they're in fifth grade and they're reading on the third grade level. So what? Who made that standard anyway? When parents start saying my child is behind, I'm like, behind what? They're not behind. They're, they're themselves. And they have a process to go through. And so if I'm in fifth grade and I'm reading on a third grade level, that just tells mom, their dad. There's some things we need to do. There's some things we need to work on. Do you know it doesn't take two years to close a two-year gap? All it takes is working on, there's little pieces. So you got a student, maybe they're in algebra, and they're not doing well. A lot of times, it's, they don't know their, their multiplication facts. It's stuff that kind of got glazed over. So you just go back and fill some of those holes. And before you know it, they'll be right where they need to be. So stop trying to be on task with your children. You're, you're a ninth grader, so all your books should be ninth grade. Not if you're not ready for ninth grade. 
because then you're just doing what other schools do and you're just pushing them on through and then what happens when they graduate they're not ready and we're wondering and listen as employers we see that what's coming and these poor children are being just pushed through the system yes. they don't have what they need to be successful and now our society has to deal with that so you're here you got this because there's really only two things you need to homeschool I, whatever is speaking to your heart to your head right now i speak this to that there are only two things you need to homeschool successfully one the desire to see your children thrive academically two the will to do whatever that takes that's all you need you don't need a degree you don't need to have done well in your academics when you were growing up you need none of that in fact there are going to be things you learned that you didn't understand when you went through the first time and you'll be teaching it you'll be like a day ahead <laughs> And when they ask the question that you can't answer, you'll say, oh, well, let's, let's put that away for now. <laughs> and, and you work on it. You go ask somebody. You, you know what I'm saying? You, it's okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm like pulling the covers off so you guys don't have this idea of what the world has out there about what homeschooling is. It's like a third grader going to college, you know, or something like that. Not necessarily so. Each child is so unique and so different. When I point to you, I need you to say that phrase we just talked about. Oh my gosh. That was so weak. Let's try that. You got it. Yes. I love it. I love it. All right. Let's see. Where are we? Where are we? <clears throat> so, the other thing I want to say is you are the right one for the job as women in particular we tend and I bet you men do this too we tend to look at other people and we compare ourselves oh well Susie she does and she's so organized and she has a schedule and you know and I'm this butterfly over here I'm trying to figure out what day it is and did we do math today and you know Susie's better guess what I have a I have a secret to tell you God gave your children to you, knowing every flaw you have, and he gave them to you anyway. <laughs> Why? Because some of your flaws are part of their learning. Some of your flaws are things that is going to help them to say, you know what, when I have kids, maybe I won't do it like mommy did it. Or maybe they'll learn patience. Or maybe... It's, it's for whatever purpose God has. He knows why he gave them you. Stop trying to be somebody else. You're messing up the plan. He needs your children to be you. If you don't run around and do 20 million uh, field trips and, and have this organized school room and, and, and desks and all that, that's not what your children need. Yes. Oh. <laughs> like... <laughs> that's not what they need you are the right one for the job with the flaws and the gifts and if you could really get that you would give yourself a pass because guess what I learned how to apologize really well <laughs> homeschooling <laughs> and in our culture back in the day Adults did not apologize to children. Y'all know what I'm talking about? So I had, I, you know, I'd do something, it wasn't right or it wasn't unkind, and the kids would say something, I'd be like, who are you talking to? I'm the adult in this house. You do what I say. Until I learned that's not right. Until I learned when I'm wrong, I need to fess up. Because guess what I'm doing? I'm teaching them. So even flaws are great. 
Because when you mess up and you learn how to ask for forgiveness and you restore, you help them, as Miss Vicky, uh, your word, you help them to become more resilient so that they can handle life and, and not fall apart when they mess up. Or, or because you're teaching them that messing up is just a part of how we do it. And here's how you fix that. So you don't have to be perfect. You just have to be you. And the you you are right now is not the you you're going to be when this process is over. Because I know you guys thought this was about your kids. I know you did. You're like, yeah, you know, Johnny really needs a smaller environment. I'm really feeling guys calling us to, you know, be at home together. You know, yeah. <laughs> and and Johnny's uh, uh, immaturities and personality is rubbing up against you. And uh, sometimes there's fireworks in the house, right? <laughs> and that's a part of homeschool. That's a part of this process of you know, people talk about socialization and, and there's so much that, that homeschoolers do now. I'm sorry for you guys uh, because it's overwhelming. Back in the day, for me, it was maybe five things you could do and maybe only three of them I did. Now you guys are trying to do 20 things and you got five different kids and you, you can't even remember your name some days. <laughs> you live in your car and you think you're doing was really great because you're trying to keep up with somebody else. If you're a single mom, you are going to homeschool differently than somebody who has a partner. And it's okay because there is this grace that God pours into our lives that comes alongside what we are and what we aren't. And it makes all the difference. So... You have it. Yeah, now you guys are getting it. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> oh, so you're not just a chauffeur or a maid or a cleaner or a nurse or a cook or tired or overwhelmed. <laughs> We spend a lot of time feeling like that, don't we, as parents? Kids feel like a burden. And Lanissa really helped me with this uh, because she has seven children. And uh, is it okay if I tell? Okay. And Lanissa and, and Lorenzo were uh, infertile for many years when they got married. And then somehow God, she prayed and prayed and prayed and cried and cried and cried. And somehow God opened her womb. And seven children came into this earth. Isn't that amazing? But there was a day when Lanissa was like, God, all these kids. <laughs> it's too much work. And she said, the Holy Spirit said to her, wait a minute. Isn't this what you prayed and cried for? Well, I gave it to you. And so now she has a curriculum called Joyful Mom. Because she, and, and whenever I see her on Facebook, whatever she's dealing with her kids, it's always in peace. You can tell she has decided that this is what God has given and I'm going to be happy about it. And so many of us, our kids are our are, are hard place. Our kids are, uh, oh Lord, it's time to go home to Johnny. Or Johnny's coming back from grandma's. Oh God. Homeschool will help you to begin to develop a relationship that you guys will enjoy being with each other. I had 17 year olders in my house. I had to learn this over time who were asking me to go to the movies with their friends. Now, you know, I don't want to go to the movies with no 17 year olders, but the fact that they asked, I went. And so I had to learn some things like when you start raising your voice and I'm just telling you guys all my flaws because <laughs> I want you to know it's okay. It's okay. I used to be a yeller and I mean, I, because I was afraid of being out of control. And so I felt, I realized that yelling was pull it together. Come on, do what I said. And so I began to understand that when I started yelling, my kids had the right 
to focus on my yelling and not on their stuff. So God is trying to work through their hearts. He's trying to get them to learn to, you know, not lie or or be obedient about this or be kind. And I'm over here, you da, 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 la, la, la. and they're saying, Mommy is so mean. They're not even thinking about what they did. But when I was able to begin to lower my voice and be still, and sometimes wait, see things and just wait until the right time. God began, he, it gave him space to work on their heart. And when you move out of the way, parents, and you allow Jesus to be in the presence uh, in your home, your children are in the presence of the Lord. And who cannot be changed in his presence? So we think this is about academics. It's so much more. This is, this is about heart and life. In some ways, academics is almost secondary because at the end of the day, if my son is a doctor, but he's a liar and a cheat, he's ashamed to me. And the ability, his ability to have gotten that doctor's degree means nothing. That's right. Homeschool is just another form of discipleship. And that's why we don't bash public school or private school. Some parents will homeschool one child and they'll public school another. This is just a way to disciple. So other people can find other ways to do that. But it's very good at connecting parents with children. I don't think any parent in here doesn't want to have a better relationship with their child. I don't think there's any parent in here that doesn't want their, them to be the one your child, your child comes to when they're having a problem or when they're hurting that they're not going, having to go outside, that they actually come to mom or dad to talk about hard stuff, embarrassing stuff, because you're learning how to allow Jesus to be in the midst of your home. And so the person you are when you start this process, that's why people say, but I'm not, I, I'm not prepared to homeschool. It's okay, because you're going to grow. And so you thought this was about them? It's as much about you because the Anita that I am standing here before you today is directly connected to my committing myself to my children and my husband in our home. And God humbled me in so many ways. I had to be honest about my stuff. I had to. Let the children have a, a place where they had something to say. Again, my background, adults lead, children follow. But as they're getting into those high school years, there are things that, and even younger, there are things they're trying to tell you, but you don't hear them. They're telling you, if you think back, they've asked you, can I do blah, 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 blah? And you simply said, no. <laughs> That's where I was. I was tired. I'm trying to keep up with three kids and my husband and ministry and all that stuff. And so they would ask me stuff and it would be no. And then finally one day the Lord said, why is that a no? And I had to think about that. <laughs> yeah, why is that a no? <laughs> and so I had to shift my mindset and I had to say anything I can say yes to, I'm going to say yes. Because there's enough no's in this world. So I'm going to be a mom who can say yes every time I can. Those are the things that start opening up relationship. That makes it so your child does not want to go in their room and close the door in their own world. That makes them want to spend time with you. Yes, teenagers have that where they're learning how to become independent. But there still is a place where relationship with parents uh, is a beautiful thing. And you can have that. All right, let's see. We keep track of the time. So I want you to start looking at yourself as an encourager, as an overcomer, as a champion, as an advocate, because that is what you are. You're already it. Now you just got to walk it out. And so I'm hopeful that by the time we finish, you will have an opportunity to find those two or three things that God is saying to you, this is for you this year. Let's go ahead and work on that. What you think? Yeah. 
You got this. Thank you. I always forget about these masks. It's amazing how comfortable you get with them, and then you hate them at the same time, right? So. Okay. As usual, awesome message from Anita. She just speaks to my heart continually, even after 22 years of homeschooling. You're always learning. God always brings people into your life to edify you to just kind of help you along the journey. And so Anita has been that in my life. And so I praise God for her. So we will go ahead and uh, it looks like we're now at the point of a break, which if you would be so led to consider going to the vendor hall. We have, it looks like we're a little bit ahead of time. Am I correct? It looks like we're supposed to start at 10. So we little, we got six minutes. We're doing good when we're ahead, right? <laughs> we'll take those six minutes, right? So um, from now until 10, 15 will be our break. And you can, um, restrooms are, we have people that can direct the restrooms to where those are, as well as the vendor hall is in room Two two four, right. So when you come out, exit out of these doors, and you make a left past the table where you checked in. You just keep straight, like just keep going down the hallway there, um, and you'll be able to get to two two four and two two six. And then once that break is over, we will start with our first session. So everyone has access to the agenda and your swag bag if you didn't pull it up online. And so. Um, the rooms have been established for each one. And so we have How to Homeschool with Lanissa James, How to Homeschool 101. That's going to be a powerful session. All of these are going to be awesome. So it's going to be hard to choose. I know it always is. And then we have Getting Your Teen on Your Teen with Miss, Miss Vicki Tillman, who is an incredible speaker, incredible website, Seven Sisters. I know she'll share that information, but I just want to shout her out. And Athletics Program overview and orientation, Nicole McNeil. Okay, so we will meet back here. Then it looks like it's going to be a bit. We're going to be busy today, y'all. That's what I said. Y'all ready? Okay. All right. Thank you all so much. There it is. Hey, everyone, please enjoy. But I just want to have a quick announcement. When you all finish your sessions and you come back here to the main stage, praise God. We're a little um, busting at the seams, which is a blessing. OK, I just want to let everybody know that not only will we have this room open, we will have conference room two right across the hall open also. So don't worry if you come back in. You can't find a seat. We have comfortable accommodations across the hall. Just want to let you know. Thank you. Enjoy.
matters. Welcome to Homeschool When You Got This. So it's break time. We're going into a breakout session. And now I'm going to take you over to see our vendors. There's so many things that can help you with your homeschool experience. And so we want to introduce you to some people who can make a difference in that. So family, you ready? This is going to be a great day. You're going to learn so much. And you're going to really want to walk into homeschooling in a different way while you're like, I need you. So follow me. And we're going to walk over to the vending room, okay? All right. So hoping that you're enjoying it all. I hope that you have a schedule in front of you and that you know what breakout sessions we're about to walk into. But as we take a break, once again, I'm going to let you know that I'm going to go visit our vendors. Let's stop it. Well, might as well show you everything. This is our registration table. You just heard the dynamic words of the director of the Shabbat Homeschool Program. None other than Anita Gibson. Hello! Wasn't well, she amazing? She was amazing. <laughs> My children are old, and I still want to take them back home so I can homeschool them. <laughs> So, of course, we're in the ministry center of First Baptist Church of Glenarden in International. And as we walk down the hall, we left the conference room, and now we're going to rooms 224. And guess what? It's going to be popping with vendors who have everything that you need for your homeschool experience. Here we go. So, first, take a look. It's popping, right? Everything that you need for your homeschool experience. Everyone here is busy, so it's probably. Okay. We're going to come back to 
This is Trina Cares, LLC. After, yeah, once they're finished with potential clients, what should we do? Is he thought you love this? Okay. Okay. Here. Okay. Toy store and play space. Hi, we're live. Toy space.
What's better than that? So, Shabbat Christian Academy would love for you to check us out. Let's look at our information. Do you see all of this literature? Do you see it? <laughs> So we just want to do everything that we can to make sure that your child is well equipped. We're going to walk away so that they can have some quiet time. We'll come back to them. But guess what? We can come over here. Ta-da! -da. to home education. I bring you greetings from HSLDA, Homeschool Legal Defense Association, and I want you to know that we do have our vending table um, uh, right outside, and it's there to support you, uh, answering all of those basic questions. And we also have the Maryland Law, and I'll be talking a little bit about um, some of the handouts we have available. So let's get started. This is the James party of nine. I want to give you hope. Anita shared a little bit about my story. And um, when 
my husband and I got married, we, you know, moved into this house. We were excited about having children. I had never, ever heard of homeschooling. How many of you guys have in that category? I, I didn't know anyone. I had never heard of it. Um, and so that was not necessarily on our plate. So along the way, um, we were in private education. And uh, after uh, believing and trusting God to have a baby, and it was several years, we had our first child. And then four years later, we had another child. So our first two children are four years apart. So I call that the, the buying blessing, where I was busy crying to the Lord that we couldn't have a second child. I realized now he was doing us a favor. <laughs> You see that college bill stack up, you know he's doing you a favor. So the James party of nine. So our, um, so my husband, and I want to share this, and this is what I want everyone to hear, how my relationship with HSLDA began. And it began uh, much longer. I've been with HSLDA now for three and a half years. But it started many uh, years ago, almost 17 years ago, when I first started homeschooling, because my husband had one question. Is this legal? Don't have the police at my door. Is was his exact words. Now, the funny part about this is that he is the police. <laughs> I said, well, you are the police. He says, well, don't have my co-workers at my door. He was concerned about me having this conversation with the girl at the park and moving us from $20,000 in private education to $500 in books. You would imagine that, you know, you're kind of happy, sad. You're looking over your shoulder saying, is this possible? Is this possible? And that's how our journey began. And so I reached out to HSLDA. I really wanted to know the foundation of what was going on in home education. HSLDA was around. I found out that what we were doing was legal. How about that? And that I could homeschool. And so it really, how many of you guys know that when you first started homeschooling, you were dealing with some fear? Yeah. And that it was possible, right? And we didn't have to be looking out the window and afraid or maybe afraid to have our kids go out, you know, in the middle of the day, right? All kinds of things that maybe people won't say, but it's a big part of home education. So that's kind of how it started. My husband wanted to know if this was legal. He did not want his coworkers at his door. And HSLDA helped ease that. So be sure to visit our booth because some of these issues are what we call deal breakers. Am I right? Because if you feel like what you're doing is not um, legal, right? And it is. It's legal in all 50 states. Now, there was a second person that I had to overcome. My mama. How many of you guys have a mama who said, you're going to do what to my grandchildren? When she refers to my children as her grandchildren, that is a sign that you're in trouble. So it was my mom who said, you are going to homeschool. You mean to tell me they're not going to college? And you could hear that silence. So not only did I need to uh, approach the, 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 the task of home education, but I had to approach it understanding that I needed to do better than what was happening at that $20,000 that we were spending in private education. How many guys know what I'm talking about? So that's my story. And so I'm really, really, really um, grateful that HSLDA was there uh, with resources. And at the time, they helped me with the legal part, understanding that, hey, I didn't have to be fearful that I was doing something legal. Now, the college part was a whole nother issue. That meant that I had to learn. And school is never out for the pro, never, ever out for the pro. And so that's where our journey began. My oldest daughter, I wanted to find out everything that was humanly possible for her to do well in, in homeschooling. I said, she's going to be a doctor and a lawyer, right? <laughs> but I heard about how you can do dual enrollment where you can get an associate degree and a high school diploma at the same time. And I pursue that with passion and I'll be sharing a little bit about it. So my daughter who's standing right in front of the Christmas tree, we're all the LJ family, Lestasia. I'm Lenissa, my husband's Lorenzo. She's Lestasia, we call her Star. So Star was the person who was the Junior Olympic gymnast. Any sports? You're probably in the other room if you're sports, right? Well, we were sports. My, my uh, daughter was a Junior Olympic gymnast. She was training about 25 hours a week uh, in gymnastics. Uh, she went all the way to a level nine gymnast. And so it took up a lot of our time. I would swoop her up from the private school and get her across to Gaithersburg to gymnastics. And that was our life. And, um, at the time I had two other little kids. Remember they were four years apart. So one was in kindergarten and one was just in the preschool program. I want to give you a snapshot of my life. I would take everybody to school at 8:30. I would sit there and not make sure you don't fall asleep or get distracted because you got to go back and get the preschool at a one, one, 11.30. So then I would go back and get the preschool at 11.30 and then I would go back and go back home. But don't get distracted because you know you got to pick everybody up at 2.30. So then I would go back at 2.30 and pick everybody up 
And my grandmother came to visit me one day and she spent a week with me and she said, baby, and I was pregnant with baby number four. She said, baby, there's got to be a better way. We didn't know anything about homeschooling. So we had a pivotal situation and I was going to homeschool for one year. How many of you guys start off reluctant? Where are my reluctant homeschoolers? So I describe myself as the reluctant to leader homeschool. I started off very reluctant. I was just going to do it for a year and then see what the Lord would bring about over those years. Well, I fell in love with homeschooling and you're going to find out why. So Lestasia, she was entering homeschooling, uh, finishing fourth grade, right? And so I thought to myself, I think I'm smarter than a fifth grader, right? But you're not so sure, right? You're not so sure. You see those books. And so, poor star, how many of you guys know that first child is your practice child? You got to just keep apologizing. I love what Anita said. You just got to just apologize. Just got to apologize. And so she was our practice child, and we figured if she would be okay. And the other ones were so young, we thought, we'll figure out what's going to work for this older child. And so we began, and we were very lonely. We have a panel here about uh, socialization, so I'm, we're going to be opening up that topic for you today, and I hope that you not, won't miss it. But I thought, man, we're kind of lonely. And along the way, we found out about a co-op, and, and it just wasn't a whole lot of socialization. There was not a lot of representation. There weren't people who looked like us, and we were very lonely. And it was my kids who came to me and said, Mommy, we don't have any friends. And I, I, I felt convicted at that moment that I should take some of my leadership skills. Now, if you come to the Working Moms panel, you'll hear a little bit about what I do professionally. But I, um, I thought, okay, well, and at the same time, the Lord pricked the heart of my pastor, and we started a group. And it's called Calvary Gospel Home Educators. And for the past 10 years here in the state of Maryland, we're out of southern Maryland, so we're out of Waldorf. We have supported homeschoolers. homeschoolers. Um, we have an oversight program. We have a co-op. You know, we're still live in our uh, co-op, and we also have a tutorial program. And this upcoming year, we'll have a, um, what we call an online academy. So I have a flyer for you. And one of the things that I, I knew that was going to be a, a part of it was that not only was I going to be helping other homeschoolers, but it also would be a way that my students, uh, my kids, could actually have the socialization and the friendships that they needed in their homeschool. And so over the years, it's been 10 long beautiful years. Uh, we have supported home education. And then from there, I thought, okay, we have socialization and we had everything in one house. So we had a, you know, a lunch bunch, our field trips. And uh, because I needed that, you got to know what you need. And I'll talk about know your why. Remember, I was going to gymnastics and that was 25 hours of our, of our time. So I couldn't run here, there and everywhere. That one place that I was going to be on Wednesday had to encompass everything that we needed. And so that's what we created at Calvary. And so many people have benefited along the way. Well, I want to fast forward you. Star did turn out okay. She, she turned out okay. She did do the associate degree. She was working on her associate degree at the College of Southern Maryland. But the thing we did different is that we did only took core classes that transferred to her pre-law program at Salisbury University. Because um, for us, it was going to cost us a lot of money because we were out of county at the community college that we were going to. So we were only taking core classes. Well, those core classes she took, she took the max that she could because, you know, university has max about how many you can transfer. She introduced herself to the dean and he says, who is this girl who shows up with half my classes done? It's the homeschooler. Do you know that's possible? It was the homeschooler and it was Star who showed up with half the classes done. That gave her an opportunity to be a uh, intern at the end of her first year. So she was a three-time intern at the Maryland General Assembly. And it was just so amazing for her to have the experience uh, for year after year, driving from Salisbury to Annapolis and uh, working uh, alongside of a senator. It was just amazing. And it was because of homeschool. It would not have been possible that she would have enough credits, enough exposure, and that the timing, the Lord just lined it up that it would be possible. Oh my gosh, so exciting. Well, so four years later, right, my other daughter's coming up. Well, she, we're standing here on our family beach. This is uh, Taylor's Beach. We're right, uh, it's in Virginia, in Reedville, Virginia, and we're featured in the African American Museum because uh, we are seven generation owners. This is on my husband's side, and uh, his family were slaves on this property. The Lord. 
You know it's the Lord. Well, we've been baptizing people on our beach for over 50 years, and we are featured on the community floor at the African American Museum. And so what that meant is that our lives were going to be a little bit different. And we uh, tragically lost both our uh, both of his parents, and he's the only child. So that meant that my children had to continue the legacy. And so we spent a lot of our time in Virginia restoring the beach and uh, learning. Uh, you know, now we're farmers. <laughs> we're farmers. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Pray for us. Are you, are you pray for us? Yeah. So, but, but it becomes part of home education, right? And so you'll hear about how my son is getting a construction management credit, but here's what's interesting. Lamari, my second daughter said she wanted to go into environmental science. I thought, aren't we already doing environmental science? Like, do we need a degree in that? I'm just asking. But when you allow your children to do what they love, they open up. So we were already doing biology on the beach. And so anyway, we presented ourselves to uh, Salisbury University. Uh, she's a presidential scholar there. You could imagine the uh, essay that talked about how we're a 30-minute jet ski from Salisbury University at our private beach. Unprecedented. This year, she's headed back next week as an RA. We're so excited and has been consistently on the dean's list. Glory to God. Semester after semester after semester. And it's hard for us in environmental science, you know, so I'm just really excited about all the times that I didn't get convicted about my homeschooling, taking them away. And don't you love those people who troll you and say, is this homeschooling? And so they were there with their great grandmother. And when they sat down, I just said, go. She had she called something called sit down. You just go and sit down. And, and so when people ask, I said, that's history. And then when my daughter was building a strawberry garden, I said, that's botany. And when my son was restoring the steps of his grandmother's beach house, I said, that's construction management one. And then when he runs around and getting the permits, that's construction management two. So he's rising a junior and he'll be in construction management three coming up. And we're very, very excited for him. So homeschooling gives you the ability to do some things that might be unique to your family. And you have your legacy. You have your story. You have your, your, your journey. And so we're not bogged down with a traditional education. We're able to do some things very different. And which brings me to my third daughter. I had three girls in a row. Lakayla, who's my graduating senior this year. She's headed to my alma mater, the University of Maryland. She's our art extra. I mean, this, my child is so great in art. But you have to understand, I can't color, cut, and paste anything. You do not want me in your art class. But that's what's nice about homeschooling. You get a hold of great curriculums, and Shabak will, will teach you. There are so many curriculums out there. We can support you at HSLDA with a whole bunch of curriculums, and we got a hold of a curriculum that really helped LaKayla soar. And we're so excited that she'll be studying marketing and graphic design at the University of Maryland, my alma mater. I told her, don't worry, I won't interrupt her because I have an alumni suite. <laughs> While you're in the hot dorm, I'll be in the alumni suite. Right at the party with my pop-up tent with the University of Maryland. Perhaps you could bring some friends over for food, but if you don't come, I'm okay with that too. She's like, ma, but over two hundred thousand dollars this past year in merit-based scholarships, and I'll talk a little bit about how that is possible. They love homeschoolers, and here's what my daughter said. My oldest daughter said, ma, the universities love homeschoolers because we show up at office hours because. Most homeschoolers are comfortable talking to other mamas because mamas have been teaching their class. So they show up and there's nobody at office hours. And my daughter says, we're the only ones that come because we're excited to have an opportunity to talk to the professor. You think about that. And so, and then she also said that college is like homeschooling. She said, you get a one hour lecture, a few PowerPoints, and you better be ready for the test. You're home homeschooling, right? <laughs> Except you're in a college dorm. You got to love that. And so along the way, we learned the benefits. So you heard from Lastasia, Lamari, LaKayla, who's got the scholarship. And then that's Lorenzo on the end. He's my uh, economics and business management. He'll be taking the real estate exam at the earliest possible that he could. Guess what? We can pull out the real estate books and start studying now. He owns too much property not to be a, a realtor. And he's doing construction management. I'm going to be showing you a couple of pictures. Homeschooling homeschooling. But more importantly, he's alongside his dad. How many of you guys know that your children need their father? 
They need their father. And and so my husband, who teaches something completely different, right? He he came into our co-op and did basketball. He taught, he did uh, automotive, you know, taught the kids how to change their oil. He did uh, woodworking, right? He did photography because he runs our photography and videography. And so he did yearbook. But those are the kind of things that they get a chance to do with that. And everybody plays a part in homeschooling. So Lorenzo is our rising uh, junior. And then it's Lanisa, who's standing right next to me. She is rising to ninth grade with high school credit, because you know you can get high school credit in eighth grade, right? If you connect with us, we'll show you how. And so a rising and learning some of the things that she loves to do. She's my sewer. You know, she loves sewing. She loves working with her hands. You know, she is definitely a, a scholar. And so we're really excited about her launch as she steps into high school. And then I have my Leo who's going to middle school who doesn't want to go, but he's excited about being with his friends, right? But he's the computer person, so we can talk about coding and Java C script, script and C++. I can introduce my son. I thought if you can game, you can code. How many of y'all need to tell some of these kids that? If you can game, you could code. And so, and then I have my Layla, who is in kindergarten. You got to love it. Nothing goes wrong in kindergarten. My husband got her some high power binoculars. We set up a little um, bird center right in the back of the house so she can watch the birds. She can tell you about all the Maryland birds, by the way. Okay. And she watches them. Guess what? That's flying creatures. We use the apology of flying creatures curriculum. And she was able to love. How many of you guys want your kids to love education? You want to love learning. And so that is so important that you don't try to do school at home, but that you homeschool and you create an environment that totally works for you. And which brings me to how we got two new puppies, okay? And we are the James Party of 11. And so when they're asking us, what are we doing? We call it animal science. Because we didn't have puppies. So we had to learn all about animals. And so people were like, what's going on? All I see you doing is running around chasing dogs. I was like, yeah, it's animal science. And we were featured on NBC News. These are the kids who were standing on Taylor's Beach. And uh, we, uh, in the middle of the pandemic, gave a lot of support to pandemic homeschoolers. So there's so much you can do. And I just wanted to open with that. So when I talk about homeschooling one-on-one, -on -one, I want your brain to be out of the box about what's possible. This is my daughter painting the back of our, our, our beach uh, welcome center down at Taylor's Beach. We're in the process of building a burned dominion. And when she's painting, that's art. Fine arts. There you go. Right. And then you see they're using um, uh, uh, woodworking equipment. That's woodworking. It's construction management. And then there's LaKayla, who's down on Taylor's Beach. And we were congratulating her on all the schools, all the schools, chasing her down, chasing her down, made a decision one day before decision day. And so, of course, we didn't know it was going to be the University of Maryland, but I am plum pleased that she'll be at my alma mater. You heard me say that we have a team for you. At HSLDA, we have educational consultants, and we have a vast amount of exposure to home education. All of us come from different walks of life. We have different stories to tell. Some of us have seven kids. Some of us have six. Some of us have two. Some of us have ten. <laughs> you know? But it's just nice because you have a variety. So, you, you know, so we have our special needs department, uh, Dr. Rochelle Somerville runs that department. We have our high school department, uh, Anita Gibson runs that department. And then we have our taught to teen, right, ran by Vicki Bentley. She runs that department. And then we have a team, an array of people who assist with their expertise. We all play a part in home education. So when you call us, you are talking to a homeschool mama. Isn't that good news? Sometimes people call us and they're just crying. And we understand. We're like, hello? I just don't know what I should be doing. And we know what that's like because we've all been there. So we're here to support. So let's talk about this road. We want it to be happy, right? We want this road to homeschooling to be happy. And so I have a, I have a, a method, if you will. First, you have to know your why. You need to make a decision. You cannot be in public school private school and homeschool at the same time. You have to put your you have to put your torch someplace. Does that make sense? And understand what your rights are and the torch that you choose, okay? And knowing your why. The reason why the Jameses are committed to home education is because we really do want to put God first and our family second. That's so important. And then education because there are days that we really just need to work on character. 
There's days that we get stuck on our devotional. There's days where we're just processing what's going on in the world and how it affects the future. There's days where they have questions for me. And that's a part of homeschooling. And I love it that I don't have to answer to anybody about those days. And when they lost both of their grandmothers, uh, their grandmother and their grandfather on the same day, can I tell you, it was a pivotal moment where I realized that the Lord had a reason that we were homeschooling and the years that we had to spend getting ourselves together. And some days are easy and some days are tougher. But I love it that um, the Lord gave us the space in home education to process because kids are kids, right? How about your kids needed to process the pandemic, right? Instead of rushing them off, they were they had questions. And I love how homeschooling gives me the opportunity. So I want you to make a decision. Once you make a decision, get clear goals and get a plan. Get a plan. Anita was so kind to talk a little bit about um, the book that I uh, recently wrote because uh, during the pan the the pandemic, I thought, what could I give back to the world? And here it is. It's called Mom's Manual. And it was just, it's just, just a strategy of how to pull it all together. I just talk in the beginning about what we do. We have a big family. Listen, we got a big family. Everything we do is big, okay? So if you got one, you can still use it. But everything from your academic schedule, your meal planning. How many, how many guys know that you're the lunch lady now? <laughs> it's devastating. How many guys know it's devastating? Because if you're not used to, can I get an amen? If you are not used to keeping up with all those meals, you're used to sending them someplace else for breakfast and lunch and all you do is one meal, I just want you to know you are now doing three meals and two snacks. And if they stay up too late, you owe them another snack. I tell my kids, you need to go to bed because there's no more food for you today. <laughs> so we just talk about how to do it. But that's part of the planning and also the academic and the subjects and understanding the law here in the state of Maryland that every subject is, is weighed equally, right? The five core, English, math, science, history, right? Perhaps foreign language, all of those subjects, fine arts, PE. How do you do it? You got this. You can do it. But it's about you figuring out what your why is and what your strategy is. Maybe you work. Don't miss our panel. Maybe you work and that needs to be inserted. There's nothing in the law that says that you have to do homeschooling from seven in the morning to three at night. I hear those school buses. My kids sleep through those school buses. But I also am cognizant that it makes you think, right? It makes you think that that's how you have to do it, but it's not. My husband used to, um, and uh, he's in law enforcement. He used to work from 3 to 11. Well, we, when we were in traditional school, he never got a chance to see the kids because he worked from 3 to 11. So when they, when they were available, when he was available, the kids had school. Do you see what happens? So we, uh, and, and I said this in the interview with Anita on her website, is that, you know, we were able to build a relationship with each other. We all are, had lived in the house. You know, we're celebrating almost 28 years of marriage, but we didn't have a relationship because we were passing each other in the wind. So I want you to know, not only did I get courageous enough to home educate, but I also got courageous enough to change that schedule. How many of you know y'all kids need a schedule change? So I changed the schedule. But I want you to know, get support. And that's what Shabak is here to do, to give you support in education. That's what HSLDA is here to do, to give you support. You are not alone. And all of that equals success. So when we think about homeschooling 101, we have to remember the Department of Education, you want to be make sure that you're set up properly. That doesn't mean you have to follow everything. And I'll talk a little bit about um, what is required, what's the state law. But you also have to consider your homeschool style and your curriculum choices. Uh, someone had come up to me uh, while I was here this morning and said, hey, I just pushed the button and I picked the one that came up in the Google search. Having not even considered what's best for your student. All of those things matter. Well, did they have an IEP? You know, do they enjoy reading a lot? You know, you get a curriculum that's heavy reading based as opposed to activity. A lot of times it's the parent that picks the wrong curriculum for their child. So let's just talk a little bit about the options. I want you to know that I want you to visit our HSLDA desk because we have our Maryland homeschool law. And I want you to know there's a couple of ways that you can fulfill the law here in the state of Maryland. Being an expert on this field for the past 10 years at Calvary Gospel, I want you to know that you have options. You can go to the county, right? Portfolio overview. Sit with your superintendent. You can have a church umbrella option, a church exempt school umbrella option, a state approved option. All of those options are available and we go over all the details in our book. So be sure to go by and get your free copy. And we also have little Ed pins over there for you. Oh, they're so cute. Where's the Ed pin? Oh my gosh. 
I have them over there. When you go over to the desk, tell them you want an Ed pin. They're so cute. And I hope that it will encourage you to think about your home education. So, oh, there they go. They got them. They got them. They're so cute. Go get the Ed pins. We have enough for you all. So make sure you stop by and get an Ed pin and say hello. So what type of homeschool are you? Are you the traditional? Are you classical? Are you Charlotte Mason? Are you the unschooler? Are you eclectic? Are you Montessori? Oh my goodness, it's like alphabet soup. You're like, I don't know what I am, right? And guess what? Sometime in that first year, you don't. You know, you get a referral of a curriculum from a friend, you try something, and you have to make changes, and that's okay. That's totally okay. The key is you figure out what kind of homeschooler you want to do and do it. So here's our situation. We are classical from September, October, November. We are super eclectic in December. We're like own unschoolers. We're rebels in December because it takes us 30 days to, you know, to, to unfold the holiday and to do all the things that we like to do and the travel we like to do. And we, we're also road schoolers too. So um, if you want any information about road schooling, my husband brought us a 33 foot uh, class C bunker house sleeps 10 and we are on the road. We're headed to Dallas, Texas. Pray for us, y'all. <laughs> On the road again. And so, but we make education. So we have this little education box and, you know, we're working on penmanship. That's my, that's my uh, project across the road. I'm like, y'all writing, y'all penmanship is sloppy. So anyway, we're going to work on, I got some real fun little things that the kids are going to be using on the way. And as well as studying the states along the way. And we have the stickers. So we know all the states, the capitals and all those good things. We know all the governors, the senators, we know everything about the states and we learn more every time we travel. And so, but then January, I'm back classical again, almost classical, kind of, kind of traditional. So January, February, March, April, and then bam, May comes. I'm back eclectic in June, and then I'm unschooled July and August. Guess what? You can decide what works for you. Isn't that wonderful about homeschooling? I want to talk to you a little bit about the teaching methods. The method is totally up to you, too. Do you want traditional teaching method, classical? Do you want to use unit studies? Is it going to be interest-based? Is it going to be more eclectic? You know, we're, we're on a beach. We're on a beach, and so zoology okay and so we do a lot of interest bay it was a time when the water was washing up in shore and there was a high uh, amount of jellyfish so we did a whole study on why are there so many jellyfish and what's going on with the jellyfish and that's interest base so you can come up with the things that interest your student and guess what they're going to love to learn there are also different teaching options listen you don't have to teach every class I'm so glad my friends at BJU Press are here and they have an amazing, amazing uh, online, right? I love having the textbook and the video in front of me. That is totally, that was like totally a game changer when you're able to do things like that in your education where you can kind of bounce back, right? You're like, hey, I need somebody helping me out here. I'm not as smart. I'm not smarter than a fifth grader. And you don't want your kid to know, right? <laughs> And so you have this teacher in front of you, but then you have this, you know, the curriculum as well. I love that. So, you know, so that's kind of computer web based, right? With the curriculum, the parent can teach. You can do a co-op and maybe Susie's, you know, co-op is cooperative education. She teaches art. She teaches, she teaches my kid art. I teach her kids science and, and then she teaches all of our kids PE. It's cooperative. Everybody puts their hands to the plow. And that's what we have at Calvary. We have what we call a volunteer army of cooperative education. And then there's also online, right? Our HSLDA Online Academy. Maybe you want a teacher online. Online works as well. So that's an option. How about dual enrollment, right? You go on down to that community college. But there's also online dual enrollment, right? And so you don't have to worry about grandma. Of course, that would just be my mama saying, you homeschooling my baby. She's not going to college, okay? So, but that's available to you so they can get college credit. OK, and that's why when the pandemic hit in 2020, my daughter, Lestasia, was pretty much done. She only had one art class when the pandemic hit in her internship. Why? Because of the dual enrollment. She had already transferred the credits, only 120 credits for the bachelor's degree. OK, so do see us at HSLDA. We can kind of walk you through this process. How about tutoring? It's OK to get a tutor. 
The tutor is not the teacher. She's a tutor. She's going to help your child in whatever they need, the special need that they may need. Maybe it's math. Maybe it's science. You get a private tutor for a limited time. Does that make sense? You have those options as well. Success is waiting for you. So take a look. I want homeschooling to be happy and take a look at a system that I put together for you guys to consider that. Elementary from K to 5, think about what's important. Grounded in traditions. What are the traditions for your family? For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And so it's a tradition. And so we make it a tradition. Individualized education. I have two sons who saw speech pathology. I'm so grateful that, you know, we had uh, telehealth. Um, we went to uh, Children's Hospital for about a four-year period for my son. Um, and we're working now with my younger son. And it's just amazing how I can incorporate that into his language classes, right? And it's so funny. I got to tell you a funny story. I know over there recording online, but this was funny. So we would go in to see the speech pathologist at Children's Hospital. And she'll say, so, LJ, did you guys do any schoolwork today? Now, mind you, we had to be all the way in Laurel at 11 o'clock. So we didn't start our school early, right? And my son would say, no, we didn't do a thing today. All I had was breakfast. And that's what he used to tell us. And, you know, they're taking notes, taking notes. And it was so funny. He was telling the truth. But what he didn't know to say was, we do our school in the afternoon. And so later, once the um, doctor had an opportunity to have the courage to mention to me, is everything okay? You know, <laughs> I explained to her. And it was so funny. And I explained to LJ. And so there's the, my kids know how to talk about homeschooling and home education. Sometimes you have to train your kids, right? Because your kids are dealing with fear, too. So to help them understand how school works, okay? So how about intentional relationships? Don't miss our socialization panel. You know what? Do we want our kids to be in a crowd or do we want them to have individual relationship with like-minded individuals? Families who are like-minded, right? And if you had five girls, you would be looking for uh, families to, you know, be the husbands of your children too, right? You'd be looking. You're like, ah, uh, don't talk to them. I know their family or whatever, you know? But you want, it, you want to make sure that you're intentional about these relationships. And that's what's nice about a conference like this. We can get around like-minded people who care about home education. And so that's part of it. And then selected ex extracurricular activities. When we were in gymnastics, that's all we did. But some of the other kids, they explored different sports. You know, my son did soccer. He did um, basketball. Those are options for you as well where you can explore different types of extracurricular activity. Okay, there's so many great ones out there. And then celebrating milestones. We love celebrating the graduation from kindergarten to elementary school. Don't forget these things, even if it's something in your home. This is what makes homeschooling fun. And then celebrating like my son who went to sixth grade. Leo's now in sixth grade. So we had a, a graduation celebration at Calvary for everyone who was rising out of kindergarten, rising out of fifth grade, going to middle school and rising into high school. Right. And of course, we had our culmination, which was our senior class of uh, 2022. But do you understand these are milestones. Don't miss them. And I think those are when the times your kids say, I'm lonely or I don't like homeschooling. It's because what they're really trying to say to you is that they're missing the milestones. And of course, if you're connected to this Maryland community, uh, Prince George's County, we have the most amazing homeschool community of very talented people. There are proms going on. There are field trips going on. There are plenty of things going on that you can jump on board. Don't overlook these things because where it may not be important to you, it could be important to your children. And we'll talk a little bit about that. So once we have that model and then you're preparing your fourth and fifth graders for middle school and other specialized attention that they may need, you now have a formula, if you will, for happy education. Let's talk about middle school. Everything I just said, add your teen enrichment, right? It's tough for our kids. Our kids are in a war. They're in a war right now. They need apologetics. They need to learn how to rightly defend their faith. And it's a big part of education today. And so get the teen enrichment that they need. And then, of course, my husband, whose background is in narcotics, we, we make sure that that is a part of their education, understanding what's going on in the world. Enrichment, how to pick good friends, why it's important. We can go on and on. We got a whole curriculum on that. <laughs> and sometimes it's eclectic, right? You, you have resources because um, as uh, you've done, you've taught something, talked about something along the way. You've 
gone to homeschool conferences, you you get an arsonist, if you will. Right now we're talking about the imp- importance of having your identity in Christ, Jesus. We're doing a whole study on that from a friend's book um, and doing devotionals. Just all kinds of great things that you can make unique to your student. And of course, don't forget to prepare your middle schooler for a high school. College prep, right? Making sure you're getting that high school credit in eighth grade if they're, you know, a, a rigorous uh, academic student. Those kinds of things, which brings me to high school. Don't you love high school? We have five drivers in our house. I just want you to know you're going to be all right. People are people like, oh, girl, I don't know how you did it. I, I'm just going to come for you. I said, y'all about 10 years too late. Now I got drivers. I got cooks. I got cleaners. I got all kinds of stuff. I just get up, step out, and walk on out. I said, don't come for me now. <laughs> Those babies are now cutting the grass. You understand? You, you understand what I'm saying? They're, they're, you know, they're cooking. I'm like, I'm losing my cook. My daughter's going back to school. Mari's the most amazing cook. We're all going to be starving when she leaves, okay? I even have hairdressers. You got it? LaKayla, she's my hairstylist, okay? She's got everybody's hair done, okay? I'm going to lose my hairstylist. They're like, we're all going to the University of Maryland for our hair appointments. I said, go where you got to go. Go where you have to go. And so, but but the children will rise up and call you blessed is what the word says. They will rise up and call you blessed. And so where you're starting is not where you're going. So be encouraged, right? The, the word says that children are the heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Blessed is what the word said. Blessed are those. They're like arrows in your hand. It's a, you're like a warrior because he has blessed you with children. Does that make sense? So don't forget that. And then when you think about homeschooling, don't forget to be well-rounded, right? Understanding transcripts and testing and extracurricular activity, your plan for higher education. Be well-rounded. It's not just the books and the paper. Do you have a plan for higher education? What's the plan? Do you have a college prep plan? Do you understand the rules to dual enrollment? Do you understand what it takes for college admissions? It's never too early to start. It's never too early. Because remember, I had to answer to my mom in the very beginning. If you were here in the beginning, these were part of my initial homeschool decision 101. There are other options. Don't forget about the workforce. Every kid's not going to college, and college is not for every kid. And it's okay. The workforce, trades, apprenticeships, internships, there are a lot of people would love your kid to come over to their shop for two hours and sweep the floor to learn how to be a better barber. They're going to glean something. It's not what's, it's not always what's taught. It's what's caught. So pay attention to those. So there you have it. You have a road to homeschool success. You're making a decision. You got clear goals. You have a plan. You understand the importance of support, not going it alone. All of it equals success. So I have just a few minutes to give you a little bonus. Let me hear you say bonus. Let's not forget to talk about the personalities. God has such a sense of humor. His humor is better than his wrath. And he has allowed you to birth your opposite. (laughs) Praise ye the Lord. Right? It is so true. And so being an expert in personality types, I've been working with the Myers-Briggs type indicator for 20 years now. It's 20 plus years. And I know the conflict between an introvert and an extrovert. You know. The extroverted mom, she wants to gather everybody up. Let's go. You're like Mrs. Frizzle on the bus, right? Magic school bus. And you can't understand why your introverted child doesn't want to go. They don't want to participate. They're like, mom, ah, uh, no, right? I don't want to do that. And you think, what's wrong with you? Something's wrong with you. I have several very, very clear introverts in my house. And let me tell you what I said to Lamari. This was funny. Oops, let me say what I said to Lamari. She said, Ma, I don't know if I could be an RA. I said, Oh, honey, just learn the art of asking questions. She had six people who interviewed her for the RA position. I said, Mari, six people? How did you do it? They all had questions. She said, Ma, it was a room full of extroverts. I asked a question and they all got to talking. <laughs> She said, I saved my energy because they all got to talking. Hang on, I'm going to stop. This is starting again. And so I want you to know that even when you have extroverted children, 
they can be um, introverted children. They can be successful. And the best thing we can do is not make them feel like something's wrong with them. Does that make sense? And then the other conflict, and I wanted to share this thing before I close. That, uh, and I could talk about all the types, but I have to talk about the thinker versus the feeler. My mom was a clear thinker. You understand? She's a single mom. I'm from New Jersey. And, um, you know, she did what she had to do to get two kids through college, you know, and all I really wanted was a hug. Did you catch that? Uh huh. And so. For years, she's um, um, she's a certified practitioner in, in Myers Briggs. We were able to resolve our relationship in so many ways. She's like my bestest friend in the whole wide world. But we understand each other. But we're very much opposites, right? She's like, bam, 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 get it done, right? And I'm like, ma, I think we should give people hugs when they get in. <laughs> but you, can you see you having a little kid? And I have some who come downstairs in the morning and. You know, whereas you have everything lined up and you're ready, you're ready to go. They need a hug. Add a pandemic in the middle of it. And it's a recipe for a, cri a crisis. Do you see how understanding personalities and this bonus part is a big part? And the last one is the judger and the perceiver. And this has nothing to do with the traditional um, definitions of the word. But the person who can take a plan, execute it, they go from left to right, A to Z right? Straight down versus the other one who's more spontaneous, right? And they, and they take detours and you think, hey, it's something wrong with you because you can't do X to Y in two seconds flat. Do you see what happens? So as a parent, you also need to understand your personality and the personality of your kid because prior to home education, they were gone eight to 10 hours. The relationship wasn't there. Am I right? Kids are gone from their parents eight to 10 hours. Think about that. And while you're thinking, consider our HSLDA Online Academy. There's so many places that you can take classes, and we support you. Take, take a look. AP courses at the, um, at the Online Academy, what the Academy averages versus the global average, they're doing a phenomenal job on their AP classes in terms of helping kids score the four or five they need, right, in order to make sure that that class transfers. Take a look. This is from 2022, the scores versus the global average. And homeschoolers do do well. They can do well. And there is support for you. Here's a discount code if you decide you want to take a class at the online academy. Again, our online academy classes are geared to middle and high school students, just so you know. Um, but there is an array of classes available to you. And I also don't want to forget to remind you that we're here for you. You got this. You got this. And as HSLDA online, um, as HSLDA educational consultants, we're here to support you. You are not alone. We have resources, how to develop a high school plan. Uh, Carla will be up later today to talk about how to develop a high school plan. Um, record keeping. We have e-books. Um, we have customized transcripts, right? You can use our transcript service. We offer transcript reviews. We have diplomas on our website, a customized plan. Our theme at HSLDA is education, is knowledge, nurturing, and networking. That's our theme. And we're here to support you along the way. And if you get a chance to visit our booth, you'll get a chance to see all of the services that we provide. Educational consulting, resources, legal answers, lobby and presence, a community of homeschoolers. We help you save time and money. So like I said before, any question, anytime, anything homeschool, members get trusted resources for just 35 cents a day. Do be sure to visit the booth. And I also left my cards at the booth as well. So if you decide to join and you just want to start in, in the high school office, call me. <laughs> Tuesday and Friday morning is the secret to catch me when I'm not on travel. Okay. So God bless you. And thank you so much for being here. God bless you. Also, there are seven simple steps to starting homeschool uh, brochure at our desk as well. Go pick that up. And don't forget your Ed pin. Yay. <laughs>
So um, I believe we're on a break now. So I'm going to just take liberty to let you know we're on a break. The vendors are available until 1115. I'll be able to answer any individual questions. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you back at 1115 for the Working Moms panel. Uh, Dr. Rochelle Somerville will be t teaching curriculum basics at 1115 in uh, break room one. And then they're having the athletic program partnering for success. Thanks for being here.
so we just Learning Center. Been in Shabbat for 20 years, so I'm like, like kind of all Shabbat also. Had a great time here today. We are doing, doing it. And, and so, wish you all were here. <laughs> Love her. And she is such a personality. So, we're going to keep walking. As you see, we have children that are interested in the program. We do want to shout out First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. Want you to know that we're back in person worship services for those okay. is this cute you gotta love this who doesn't want this for you to take all of your notes um, no problem at all say look at them they have just stop you just love it just Why everything you know. you? Yes. Hi, how are you and see so check out the table check out everyone on this one session to the next session we're all excited about all this <laughs> one Knowledge, wisdom, books, curriculum. This is the place to be. Yes, we are home. Mm -hmm. So excited. Yes. <laughs> Homeschooling is the way to go. Yes, it is. <laughs> you heard it here. Homeschooling is the way to go. Okay. Yes, also, is. here, if you want to do your thing, because, you know, we went to a shower. It's a bit ready to try to do it. And for fun, we have an adventure express kit. We have puzzles. We have puzzles. Again, because it's everything you use to expand your child's education. So, I'm trying to just look at the mantra here. Okay, we're gonna now go back into the vendor room. Okay, so, literally, what's happening? Ha 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 ha! And so, and so, and so, so, a lot of times you need munchies and you need snacks when you're home, right? You can have 
have fun parties, you can get treats for your children, and uh, how to contact them. They're on Facebook, they're on Instagram, and they have a website. Something that you need to make homeschooling fun for your child. The lights are blinking, so guess what? I'm going to bring Can everyone hear me? Okay. I thought it was supposed to be somebody else. I'm just not. Yeah, check. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, that's true. 
Okay, thank you all so much. I hope you've been blessed so far with the workshops and the opening session. I know we were all blessed with Miss Anita's words of encouragement and realness about it, the homeschooling journey. So um, we are going to go ahead and get started with the Working Homeschool Mom panel. And so we may have another... Oh, okay. So we're rolling here then. Go with another one. But we can do this. We got three of us. So, okay. So when you say working homeschool mom, I go, say what? Like, do those even go together? Do they even go together? And some will say, oh, you're crazy. How in the world can you do it? I will say that after uh, 20 years of completely homeschooling, after having stopped private practice as a therapist to homeschool for 20 years, um, I went back to work. Uh, I started a business as a jewelry consultant. I also started working part-time uh, about three years, two years later with HSLDA, which I love. And I also now have Natalie Mack LLC. So we are really, really busy at my house, but I'm not going to say that I'm only one busy. These ladies have totally, completely different journeys, a little similarity with Lanissa and I of HSLDA, but I'll let them tell their story. So, but homeschooling is a lifestyle. I say that all the time. 22 years is a lifestyle. If it's not, it just doesn't seem like it would work because it's all about learning constantly and bonding with your kids and family time. And it all goes together into this incredible, um, incredible lifestyle, really, quite honestly. So, but we know working is all encompassing as well. And it can be, right? You have to set those boundaries. So I want to go ahead and present not only myself on the panel, but Lanissa James and Vicki Tillman. And so I want to start with asking the ladies, actually, what is their, what are they working? What is their business? What do they want to share about themselves in that? Lanissa? Wonderful. Well, thank you, Natalie. And I want to encourage you before you hear our stories is that um, all of us work when you think about it. Every mama works because what it takes to run a household is a full time job. How many of you guys know what I'm saying um, to, you know, make sure there's groceries, make sure there's meals, make sure there's a meal plan, make sure the laundry and blah, 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 blah. Um, but then if you also serve in your church, maybe you volunteer. So now how about your kids go sport, do sports? Well, you're working because now you're, you actually have an Uber job and you don't know it. Um, yeah, so, but you're working. And, and, and so there's an aspect of it. And I think sometimes when you hear a little bit about what we do, we think, Oh, I couldn't do that. It's just, as a mama, you're always doing something. Does that make sense? Um, so what I do is a little bit different. I am the mom of seven. And um, prior to me having any kids, I was an independent contractor with a, a major a major cosmetic company. And uh, I have to bring greetings to one of your senior pastors, uh, one of your pastors here, um, Reverend Linda Johnson Thomas, uh, I call her LJT, she uh, was the person who mentored me uh, in business. I had no children at the time, and so I love Linda, uh, and I'm so excited to be at her home here at uh, Shabak and First Baptist of Glen Arden, but I didn't have children. I just had a dream of having children. You heard Anita tell my story. We were dealing with infertility. I don't think I had thought about what I was going to do you know, whether or not we were going to be a two income household or one, but we did make a decision to own a home here in Prince George's County. And we happen to live in a county that, you know, really on most occasions acquires two incomes. Right. And so along the way, when I started homeschooling, I pivoted into homeschooling. My husband was concerned about, oh, I don't want this to affect your business. Are you sure? But we were spending $20,000 in private education. But I figured while they do what they do during the day, I'm going to homeschool my kids. So, and most of my business was in the evening. And can I just tell you how shocked people were, my friends and, and our business, when they heard that I was not going to be sending my kids to school anymore? So that's just kind of flipped. That's kind of how I stumbled into homeschooling. I was already, I have 30 years in, in uh, direct sales. And uh, I lead a very large organization. And um, so as the leader, as the director of that group, I made a decision that I was going to home educate my kids and I was going to adjust my day in the middle of the day. And that while everybody did whatever they were doing during the day, 
I was going to have my babies at home. Because remember, if you were in my class earlier, I would take everybody to school at 8.30, come back and pick up the preschoolers at 1130, then go back and pick up everybody at 2.30. My day was eaten up in the car. So when we start home educating, I actually had more time. So while the kids rested in, I now have prime time. You know, I'm the five o'clock club woman, but I love five o'clock club. But it's not for every everybody doesn't love that club. Don't make you love that club if you don't love it. I'm not trying to make you love it. But like my grandmother said, you live long enough, you're going to get up early. And the longer you live, the earlier you'll get up. And so um, and so that's what we did. So so that was one plate spinning. OK, but then I kept having children. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, I went from four kids to seven. Well, can we count that as a job too, please? Do you want to know about what it's like to do laundry for nine people and two puppies? You don't, okay? You see my RV over at the laundromat because we do it in two hours at one pop because it's that that chaotic, right? And please don't take all of the Jameses to the Chick-fil-A, okay? We are spending way too much. They're overwhelmed when they get the order, okay? So so now we got the, the independent business at our work. We got the, all the children. And along the way, I, you know, the ministry started. So we've run a ministry at Calvary Gospel. We have over 300 homeschoolers in our ministry. Over the past 10 years, we've helped, helped thousands. I've had the, the, the privilege of seeing all of these transcripts coming from these, the public school and the private school. Seeing it all. We know what's going on. We have the, office, the, the files in our office. And, and so we're a nonprofit. You know, everybody's a volunteer army. But it's still a form of work. Right. So now we have that plate spinning. Right. OK. It's not necessarily a for profit, but it's spinning. And along the way, HSLDA shows up. Now, I had not worked outside the house in 26 years. So I thought, <laughs> no, I'm unemployable. You understand? My mom was like, oh, it's what you do already for the church. You might as well do it for HSLDA. And I'm like, well, I don't know. But along the way, two mornings, I am live on the lines for HSLDA. I love it. I love working with people nationwide. And guess what? God blesses you. Can I tell you how much we know about homeschooling by being a blessing to others? Listen, you can't outdo God. You can't outdo him. So now I have another plate spinning. Okay. And then along the way, um, you know, I have my to james.com. I have a .com website. I have a book that I've uh, launched. You know, I am uh, certified in Myers-Briggs. And those are what I call outliers. How many of you guys heard the term outliers? Things that you can do when you look, you're thinking, how is that possible? I don't know. And that's where the mom's manual came out. People say, how do you do it? Well, I just wrote a book, okay? And and, and it's just a, a plan for you. So that is a lot of plates. And then when my husband brought an RV, well, guess what? We road schooling now, okay? We even had an RV school going. So that's a, still another plate. You know, you say, well, do you work? Well, now we road school, you know? And so... But I want to talk to you a little bit about peace, and then I'm going to let Vicki tell us about what she's doing. There's so much peace when you're in the will of God for your life. Um, because now I have two in college. I have one that's graduated college. I have two this year rising in college. And we're so grateful that the privilege of being able to find work that aligns with our household with two in college. And by the way, they're all coming. They're all back to back now. <laughs> And what that's like and, and, and how it's able to be a, a help helpmate to my husband who is willing to do whatever it takes. But he never pushed me. He was just whatever you want to do, honey, whatever you want to do. So that's my story. And yes, we have a lot of plates spinning and I love them all. I have so much fun. So if you just need some joy in the process, do see me. OK, I'm a joyful mother of children. <laughs> Hey, I'm, I'm Vicki Tillman, and I'm so very honored to be here. I, I was telling the workshop earlier that like 35 years ago, uh, my friend Marilyn and I were in leadership at our local homeschool group, and uh, we, we took over our first meeting. It was our first meeting. We looked out, and there was all these moms, one Asian mom, one Hispanic mom, one black mom. And my friend Marilyn looked over at me and I looked at her and said, something's got to happen here. And so for me to be part of a whole conference where I'm the minority, like, praise God. Thank you. <laughs> so in, in my homeschool working mom journey is, is, you know, back in the early days, you know, if you were a homeschool mom, if you had a job, it was like you were sitting right next to Satan, you know, <laughs> and, uh, 
So I, I, I came to a point, though, having five kids, um, and uh, my husband was suddenly disabled, uh, that something had to happen. And so I, you know, I can't add, so I couldn't go work at a bank or be a cashier. I can't organize, and so I couldn't go be a secretary somewhere. So I went back to school and got my master's in counseling because it's what I've always done. And, uh, and so I, I've worked now for um, almost 30 years now as a licensed professional counselor, and I love it. It's the best job in the world. And by the way, if any of your teens want to go to college and feel the calling to, to work in mental health, our culture needs it really badly. And uh, they will never get rich off of that. But if it's a calling, that's what God gave them. And I, uh, I, I pray every day, God will send more kids into the field. So what, so I, brought my kids through the college, the grad school experience. I did it by distance. I was in Liberty University's first online distance graduating class. Um, I was the first licensed professional counselor in Delaware that did their education by distance. So boy, did we have some pace setting to do there. There's all kind of hoops to go through. Um, but my, so it, it was just a necessity. And so I, I think, like, Lanasir, you have a joy that God has given you, and you learned your joy. And I think the gifts that God gave me to get me through the, the, the rigors of grad school and then being a working mom is he gave me a scripture. And as I've learned in all things wherewith to be content. And if I had a magic wand, I, I would have waved it and been a millionaire. And, you know, like, like but that's not what happened. And what he gave me was contentment in the things he gave me to do. And when you're content, you can do all things because Christ is strengthening you. And so, you know, for those of, of us who have to be, have the blessing of being working homeschool parents, what we find is like Lana Sears, everything comes. It's not just a job job that makes money. It's, it's service work and it's multiple kids and it's homeschooling because when you do, God gives you more to do. Have you noticed that? <laughs> And so, you know, as our homeschool community grew up in the northern, like we're in the corner of Maryland, Delaware, and Pennsylvania, so we had that pool of homeschoolers, and uh, we needed an umbrella school in the area. Well, some fools got to do it, so guess who got to do it, you know? <laughs> so. And, you know, so co-ops and umbrella schools and state representation there in Delaware to go and be the delegates to talk to all the representatives. We call it cookie day. We take all of them cookies uh, and uh, and say homeschooling works. That's with the HSLDA. Do you, do you remember those days? Like, I do. I do. They, we'd have HSLDA cookie days. Anyway, <laughs> um, the, uh, the, the, so the, what God does is if you watch and if you trust him, he will give you lots to do. And he will also train you not to compare yourself to anybody else. And so that's that, you know, we cannot compare ourselves to anybody because God's plan for each of us is unique. And mine looks different. And everyone's looks different. And so so we got the opportunity to do umbrella schools and, of course, be involved in, in church. And then as our kids, my group of co-op moms and that we started the umbrella school. So I served as academic advisor for the umbrella school for almost 20 years. Got lots of hundreds of kids into college um, and military and mission fields and all this. You know, it's, it's like God gives you strength and joy and contentment in what you do. And then as the, the kids were starting to graduate, you know, our kids were very opinionated and they would say, I don't like this textbook. Oh, I won't do this textbook. And they would tell us what they want. And so if we could, the group of my friends and I would make a curriculum that would be no busy work and respected their learning styles. And then so our kids are graduating and we go like, that's bad stewardship. You know, we, to just just retire and go on do our thing. So we felt the calling to be Titus moms and to stay around the homeschool community. So we started Seven Sisters Homeschool. And uh, so if you ever need like how tos 
like there's thousands of posts on there, how to do this and that, especially the high school level and, uh, and curriculum that's uh, downloadable. So a lot of freebies and, and, um, and, um, we got a special freebie just for conference goers. It's APA research paper, um, writing guide for the teens, and then everything in the store is 50% off right now. So until the end of August. So you can grab one of these coupons if you want to at the vendor hall or on these I made handouts up there. Um, but the deal is I, I learned something. At, Natalie and I met at the two to one conference. So it's a blogger conference a few years ago. And uh, one of the speakers there said, you know, it's working homeschool moms. We are juggling a lot of balls. And every day you got to get up in the morning and decide which ball you're going to drop. But when you decide, it's your choice. So it, it feels better. <laughs> I don't know. I that is those that you can hold on yeah those are awesome tips and everything um yeah you have to decide which ball you are going to drop so before you even decide which ball you have to be at peace with knowing you're going to have to drop a ball here and there right and um some of us are perfectionists by nature and some of us in the homeschooling community <laughs> right we're extra right we we really feel deeply about our responsibility to homeschool our children, and we should, but there's peace in that journey. And when God calls you to the carry these different balls, as you've heard uh, Lanissa and Vicki both speak about that, then you have to be at peace that you're gonna have to drop a ball here and there. It's okay, it's not gonna go, it's not gonna roll far from you. You'll be able to pick it back up when you need to. So, and God is- Dirty dishes. Yeah, exactly, so, yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, that's that lifestyle that you began to uh, embrace. And so I would say, how have you found support in this, in this new, lifestyle this journey it's not new for you all but how would another mom that's considering it or someone that's currently working and they are considering homeschooling that are attending this conference i spoke with someone earlier who is currently working in the current educational system that her child is in isn't isn't meeting the needs right and so she's here seeking answers and that's a big question it's like i need to still work i want to still work or both of those and how do I do it? So how have you all found support? What are some ideas and things that we can share with our audience? Yeah, support is important. And I love, I want to piggyback on something you said about dropping balls. I always say you're not always on. If you're on all the time, you're on something. <laughs> so you're going to have a focus buffer and free days, okay? Yes. Days that you're focused, days that are buffer. You know, you're setting up things and days that you're totally free. You know, you, you power the phone down, you're free. And so um, in terms of support, you also, I, I, here's a word I want to throw out to you. It's koinonia. Koinonia. Koinonia is the Greek word for fellowship. And that is where support begins. As you begin to fellowship, support begins today, which you just being here. You're around other people. You'll find folks who live in your community. You'll find folks who, uh, whose kids like what you like. You see them on the soccer field. You see them on the basketball. There are people in your community because you don't have to do everything. Delegation is my expertise and that you don't have to drive to every game. You know, you'll find another parent who you can partner with. But koinonia always has to be on the top of your lips. And I think that that's one of the things. I'm actually writing an ebook called Cultivating Community. And it's a focus on koinonia because it's a give and take. It's a, it's a healthy relationship where you're around someone who supports you. You know, and it may be grandma. It may not. You know, sometimes the support you need is not in your immediate family, but there are people who would come alongside of you. Be prayerful. Be prayerful to say, who could help? You know, I'm, in, I'm working, blah, blah, blah. You know, nine to one, I have to work. You know, who could help, you know, with the children? It could be a teen who's off for the summer who would love to come over and play with the kids while you're working. Do you know what I mean? Or work on a project, et cetera. So it could be teens. It could be grandma. I had to also let go of control because your way is not always the only way it could be done. Does that make sense? And so my mother-in-law and my husband, they come alongside. Does it look like mine? No, it doesn't. Does that make sense? So there's support out there. But I think sometimes what I had to learn was that the support I could not control. It, they weren't going to do it the way I wanted to do it. And so now I get to leave town 
and I leave the kids and I no longer have a, a shopping list. You know, I don't have, you know, meals that I used to set up because I later found out that they were getting pizza. <laughs> I couldn't figure out why there was so much food left when I got home. Pick your battles, guys. Pick your battles. There's hope. There's help right along. And can I just tell you about the teens? Now, if you know my kids, then you know that um, the, the worst is train up a child in the way they should go. And uh, my children uh, have learned through serving others how to take care of things. And I'm just so grateful that this group of, of, of the army that I have at home, they, they don't need me. They need me, but they don't need me. Does that make sense? Like, I have no doubt. I left out early this morning. Folks got breakfast. Folks got clean clothes on. Everybody's got hair done. You know, maybe it's not done. You know, the dogs got walked. They got fed, et cetera, et cetera. Let your children do because they want to be able to learn to do things. And I remember bringing Lestasia home the first year, and she looked at me during lunchtime. I looked at her. She looked at me. I looked at her. I said, well, it ain't going to make itself, you know. But I didn't realize how much I was doing for her. So homeschooling also allows them to, to make their own sandwich. What are you making a sandwich for? Why can't they make their own sandwich? Right? Why can't you move the milk down to the bottom of the refrigerator so she could get her own cereal? Stop complaining about the, the milk that's, that fell on the table. Get over it. Don't cry over spilled milk. And, but along the way, they've learned how to do things on their own. So my support has come with, um, you know, family. Not in big droves, because don't nobody want to take care of seven kids. Can I be honest with you? Don't nobody want to do that. They don't like you that much now. <laughs> but but pieces, you know what I mean? And 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 uh, teaching the kids, and and you know my husband doing things, and you know and uh, hooking up. Our kids going to the same soccer game. Can you know trusting? Look at your neighbor. Say trusting people, building relationships. Can you ride with Miss Vicky to the game? Mommy will come by later. You know, because I'm only one mama, right? And so they know I, I'm like the celebrity at the games because I can't make them all. They got too many sports ideas, you know, so I just come in and go. <laughs> but they know the rotation. Mom's going to be at my soccer game. She won't be at the basketball games because you can't do everything. But there are people who are like minded, even in your home education. Maybe somebody can teach a science class, an art class, allow people to do for you. And I'll, I'll close this and I'm going to pass this mic to Vicki. Sometimes we don't want the help that we say we want. Can you tell I'm talking from experience? Sometimes we don't want the help that we say we want, right? Because we really want to control things. Trust God. Trust the process. And, and be prayerful because you want to keep your kids safe too, right? But there are people who can do it, and they may not do it as well as you can. But guess what? They'll learn from that family as well. Brilliant. Yes. So... Just piggybacking because yeah, you said everything. Is is our support system is what makes working homeschool momming work the best. And so if your support system like family is thin, like I, I live way far away from my family. Um, I I was very blessed because I have a homeschool community and and my church. And um, and through that like when there were multiple sports games to get to, or I had to work during a, a practice, um, I had moms that would take my kids. Uh, however, I did earn my keep. Yeah. And so I did plenty of volunteer work when I, when I could. So it's, it wasn't just me sucking the homeschool community dry or my church dry. And I, and, and I learned the, the power of trusting God through these situations. I remember one time, I, I can't remember what, what we were working on so hard in our homeschool thing. So I had work and I, we, there was something we were working really, really hard on. And the idea of finding something for supper was really just like, I, I don't feel like thinking about it. And it's no, no kid's turn. Like the kids all learned to cook and they did, you know, their adulting things as appropriate. Um, but I, I, I just went to the kitchen and I prayed and I said, God, you know, it sure would be nice to have some pizza here. You know, just don't feel like cooking. And I'm not, I am not kidding. There is divine intervention in the world. About half an hour later, one of my Sunday school moms in my mom's Sunday school class 
rang the doorbell and she had a couple pizzas in her hand that she had just picked up. And she said, I don't know. I just felt like bringing you over some pizza. Like if God has called you to work in homeschool, there are days where he'll just send you some pizza, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you have a question? No, I was just getting, I was just going to open it up to questions. So you're right on time. What if the working mom is, but the homeschool mom is the homeschool dad. Yes. So the working mom is either the house for 50, 60 hours a week, and dad and the 10-year-old is homeschooling. Yeah. And dad doesn't know where to begin because all he's going to do is make people jelly sandwiches and give her breakfast to bed. Yeah. Now he's going to give him, someone like that, the tools to be able to make this work. You know, that when when a parent feels lost to get started, um, is trusting that parent, but also giving them the hand-holding they need, which, which means, like, if you need to make a schedule and you teach them how to teach reading. And so basically you're going to work 90 hours a week. Now you tell how you do the 90 hours a week. <laughs> I want to throw something at you. And uh, I, I would apologize, but I'm going to be unapologetically honest. Um, so, you know, my mom was a single mom. And uh, my children are blessed to have a father. And he just thinks different. And I tell the children that how daddy does things is your blessing. Daddy's their ATM. My daddy wasn't the ATM. Uh, you know, daddy will get up in the middle of the night, let them ev let them call and drop a call and think he's not on his way. He's like, did you call me? <laughs> That's who he is, and he's their father. And, um, and he has a right to unfold that relationship the way he sees it. And it's kind of like that pizza thing, you know, where I have all of my, you know, healthy meals lined up, you know, labeled, if you will. Guess what? He, they're learning something from him. Um, and, you know, with him being in law enforcement, he's under a lot of stress during the day. So when he's home, he's the fun dad. You know, he's scrolling games on his phone. I'm so, I had to get over my anger <laughs> about how much fun they were having. <laughs> Can I just be honest? Can I be honest? They're fine. And when it comes down to the educational part, maybe that's the part where you, you know, kick in, you know, so my husband, he's not going to teach all five core classes. He's not. You can line it up all you want, but you have to figure out how you have a gift there. You know, the, you know, maybe your daughter needs somebody to serve her in bed that she's, pre she's preparing to find the right suitor suitor. You'd be like, uh, -uh my daddy. Oh no, he made pancakes. You don't make pancakes. No. Right. <laughs> So I, I'm just giving you a paradigm switch, if you will, about, um, you know, your concerns. And like I said, you're, you know, you're a scholar. You, it may be something you can handle in the evening or, you know, another plug for BJU Press. You know, they have videos where they can have the curriculum and a, a video teacher where his break, you know, while he's home during the day, you're like, hey, hon, could you get one video in? Could you get one 30 minute video in for the kids? You know, and, and them running all around. I told you when they would go down, you didn't hear, you might not have been in my class, but when the kids would go down to see their great grandmother down in Taylor's Beach, you know, it was just sit down. There was no structure to it. I say, sit down. You're going to learn something. It's history. Totally eclectic, unschool. And those are some of our most precious times as when they think about, because now as they had to pick up this mantle and this torch, they, they now have gleaned. It's not what's taught, it's what's caught. And also the character base. And how about what we're teaching about our marriages in the process? You know, that whole mom has all the answers, dad doesn't. Mm. I, could, I could teach a whole class on that. But we have to be mindful about what we're saying so that we can um, uh, grow our children in areas that the school system could never do. So, you know, so anyway, dad wants them to be successful, too. What does, what does he want to teach them? And that's the question maybe you can ask your husband. I know you're you're just as equally committed to these children. What do you want to teach them? 
And so for my husband, you know, being in narcotics, there's some things he want to teach him that I, I didn't have listed. I didn't have it on my curriculum list, but he does. Does that make sense? Because he sees things that I don't see. So it's a shared res responsibility. So praise the Lord that you have a man who would be willing, right, to pamper your daughter all day long. Yeah. And is she the only child? Oh, yeah. So she's like the only child. Precious time. She may never get these days back. <laughs> she may never feel this special ever again. Right. And when you've lost family members, how many people have lost family members in the middle of this pandemic? Right. You look back and say, man, those were precious times. So I hope that helps you. Sis. I was going to say it reminds me of when you are a new mom and it's bath time as an example. And you are terrified to let your husband just give the baby back because you think that baby won't survive, right? <laughs> and so you're hovering and you're like, no, you don't do it that way. You don't wash hair first. You do this. And we only use this shampoo. And, oh, that's old. I tried that last week. So, you know, you're terrified, right? But the baby survives. At least all five of mine did, yeah. you know. And so, and no one drowned. No one had any, I didn't have to resuscitate anybody. Everything was just fine. And so there is, you just have to trust processes. And you have to trust the journey that God has you on. You have to seek him for that peace. And I know we're talking trust. And, and, and I'm not just saying trust is like, you can just grab it here. Oh, I got trust now. I'm good. It's a process to get trust. It's a faith walk to get trust. It's not an overnight thing, but he does provide it. He does want us to ask for it. He is invested in everything that concerns us. And so, and, and like Anita also mentioned this morning, right? And Lanissa said it just a few minutes ago, they're learning something. And I'm speaking directly with you, but I know that there's that's a question I'm sure others have. That's a, so they're learning something, and we don't always know what that might be. It may not look like what we think they should be learning. And like Lanissa said, her husband with narcotics, that wasn't even on her list, right? Wasn't on my list, wouldn't be on mine either, probably most of you all's. Um, but if he's asking for help, if he is actually asking for help, then there are so many curriculums that would make it a lot easier just to get him started into some type of group. And then you get he gets comfortable and he starts to figure out what works and what doesn't work for him as well as for you, your daughter. And um, there are so lots of schedules that are available that could be useful. So definitely um, part of that is just being willing to receive his input about what he feels he wants to impart during the day, as well as just kind of saying, hey, I know you have her best interest at heart. We have two in college currently, and if that's the destination that you all are looking for for her, and eventually she'll own that own that destination in high school, hopefully for herself, you know, but she's still young. So if that's the destination that you all have for her, then he's invested in that. And so he just needs to be given an opportunity to say, this is what I'm, this is what I want to put into it. So yeah, no perfect answer, but some, some answers that may be helpful. Yes, definitely. So we are open for questions. I did see someone in the back for a minute and I'll get back to you. Yes, ma'am. So if I heard her correctly, she said you have teenagers and both parents work outside exactly. the home. Okay. And um, we get this a lot, don't we? Yeah, we get this a lot. And this is a uh, interesting conversation. Um, one, you, you want to have support. Um, children need to be monitored. Okay. Children need to be monitored. Uh, teens, whereas they're still independent enough to feed themselves, clothe themselves, work on they need a lot of monitoring. Like my husband is so such that he can hit one button and shut all Wi-Fi down. Put you all out to business. You understand? <laughs> and, and I'm in the house, right? Because things are happening on the internet. Things are happening on the cell phones. There's a lot going on. So that's the first thing you have to get in your mind. Teens need to be monitored. What's your system to their monitoring? You know, so whereas legally they are old enough to be at home, they still need to be monitored. Is it a next door neighbor? Is it a family member who's stopping by? Is it a, a, you know, bring your child to work day? 
is it flex hours for one of the, the parents? You see what I'm saying? But keep that in mind. You know, just because you can doesn't necessarily mean that that's the right way to do it. Now, I'm from the generation where we had a latch key. You know what I'm talking about? The latch key. Y'all know about the key, right? Yeah. How, did y'all have a silver one? Yes. <laughs> did you have one key, right? You know, and, and we came home and the house was empty and we learned how to open the door, sit down, and there was no internet. So you had to call mama and you had to call mama and tell her that she was home. Base. It was a monitor. You, you better right? make that call. And you bet and there was a time there was a time limit. So I would be playing, I'd be like, Look, I gotta go, I gotta go, because I gotta call my mama. And you couldn't call from the cell. There were no cell phones, right? So it doesn't mean so we can't make homeschool so rigid that that's not a part of it because we did. A lot of us did come home to empty homes because our parents worked. But, and so what I do is, you know, there's ways you can put technology. There's ways you can put cameras. There's ways you can do all kinds of things. But I think the, the, the message that I want to send to you, my friend, is that you let children know, even as they're teens, that you are, you're their mother and dad's their dad. And, and, and they are not adults. You know, because even even though they can, right? You, we get caught up in that they can, and that they have to submit themselves. And I, I, I hear so many kids who think that the cell phone is theirs. I said, well, let me give you this bill. Hold on a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me introduce you to Verizon. So get a plan, get some systems in place, get accountability, right? Because um, kids need to be monitored. On the practical end, and that's beautiful suggestions, is also um, since you can't, if you have both parents working, the the one-on-one, -on -one, let me instruct you on this stuff, is not going to happen very efficiently. You'll have to choose some things that really matter to you, and you, those are your things, and then you farm out the other things, which, oh my goodness, we've got all these opportunities now. So we've got umbrella schools, like right here at Shabak, and y'all got in, do you have umbrella school yeah. classes? Um, there's online classes like BJU has, um, True North Academy, Funda Funda Academy, um, where they will, they will like help you do the academic advising and give courses right there online. You can pick up, you know, one-off courses at OutSchool. So our friend Latanya Moore, do you know Latanya from Two to One? Anyway, she, so. she's, she's, yeah, really big in there. So there, there's so many opportunities um, so that you don't have to be the instructor and uh, they can still get that education, but right, like teens still need that team. And so it's exhausting, but you think you've only got teens in high school for four years. Mm -hmm. And and you can do anything for four years. So I'll give you my favorite quote, though. If you need a good quote, G.K. Chesterton said, anything worth doing is worth doing badly. <laughs> Yes. And yes, also definitely. school does not have to happen seven to three. So yeah. it could be a lot of your instruction is in the evening, you or know, weekends. and or weekends. Yes. Good points. Good points. We are now at. We have one question. Can we take the OK. Away? Can we take one more question? Yeah. OK. We have one question because we're at 12. So we got been to two. Four, she but... said two. Go ahead. OK. okay I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to ask, um, have any of you had um, a time that you can recall where you needed to pivot in your career because you realize that homeschooling was a lifestyle where you needed to really figure out a, a way to talk to your supervisors or your job and let them know that you were doing this thing um, and you felt maybe hesitant to share like your journey with them? Does anybody have anything? Yeah. Okay. One, I am fortunate being a counselor and working in a practice where I've, I've just earned some respect. I would go to my my boss and I would say if they needed some demands that were going to take away from what I needed to do homeschool wise and say, I need to do this for my homeschooling. And so I, I think a lot of times if the culture can be flexible, so I'm in a work that I can be, um, that, they'll, that they'll work with you because they want to keep you. And the, unfortunately, there are times where God says, okay, we're closing this door, we're opening another one. It takes a lot of prayer to know what to do there. There was. I can help you with that conversation. Yeah. Um, I was 
Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. See, God provides. He really does, right? That's a blessing. Yes, ma'am. When you have, um, I have a one-year-old, a six-year-old, and an eight-year-old, and so when I have um, children, you said you choose evening or weekends to do homeschool, mm-hmm. but you do the core curriculum. Uh-huh. Yeah. What I'm finding is, what do I, what do I do with all the other hours that they're not schooling because I feel like they're watching TV or playing games? Um, even if I give them a Maya Academy or out of school, uh-huh. and they're so young, and I want to work, I'm facing the computer from nine to six. They're doing whatever. I know I'm feeding them and everything, but I feel this guilt feeling of okay, yeah, they're not. What, what? are they doing all day long from Monday to Friday because I'm working? Who's really taking care of the kids? They're not really being educated during those hours. They're not really paying attention to the curriculum because I'm not. Mm-hmm. Sitting next to them and making them should food. should should we so have food. lunch together and yeah. do some brain Yeah. Are you working from home? Is that, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. She's yeah. working from. So home. it's the pl- it's in, in the planning, sis. Yeah. You need my mom's manual. Yeah. It's in the planning. Yeah. So you see what I'm saying? Because if you don't have a plan in place before your work start, can I just tell you, it's a terrible thing when you have to start work and you're trying to get get a system going you were supposed to already have a plan so that you knew exactly what they were doing even if you have quiet moments in between telephone or in between computer work you you have to have that system already in place so yes Yes, definitely definitely yes so unfortunately we need to close but we are accessible we are here we're passionate about homeschooling passionate about coming alongside those who are currently homeschooling those who are considering it we are here because of that so definitely we all have businesses that we do consultations and we assist families um, and definitely find us throughout the day and i think there was an offer for lunch meet up for and where that segues right on into lunchtime and so what we're going to do before we actually partake, because I'm famished, I'm thinking everybody is, right? When you're busy and getting good information, somehow your stomach is like, I want food now. So, yeah, so what we are going to do is, I think, I don't see anyone, are they, do you know if they're ready to come in yet? Have you, is there anybody out there? Because we are, what the plan is right now for the vendor spotlight, and so we have all the vendors that are here, and I forgot earlier that there's an additional vendor room. You may have already discovered it, but there's room 224, 226, and 227. Okay, so we, I, yeah, I did not know, but there's a 227, and um, the gentleman who just stepped out, he has a Christian um, clothing business. There's several other vendors in there as well. There's someone has uh, early literacy and reading book that looks really awesome. And Seven Sisters Table, and Seven there. Sisters Table is in there. Yeah, yeah. I already, I already hit, I already hit her chocolate for the middle, that middle morning slump. So definitely, so they should be. No, they're not ready yet. They're gathering. Okay, okay. So they're gathering. So if you, I'm thinking if you want to Take just a, if you need, if you absolutely need to run to the ladies' room or the men's room, then go ahead. But we're going to get started as soon as they come in. And the vendor spotlight is literally vendors will come up and just give. They have one minute to talk about what they have here in, on exhibit. So you kind of get a little bit of idea. And then you can, if you feel led, you can go by their table. Definitely. Okay. Um, and then we're going to, and then we're going to, after that, segue right into to our lunchtime. So we just we just got a hot hot minute or two, you all. Yeah, yeah, that's what I you come back in here to eat, right? Yeah, yeah. I haven't heard yet. I'll have to let them tell me and I'll announce it. I don't know where. I don't know where. Okay, I have this one.
who are all here seeking answers and support. And so we are, we're so thankful to see, see the turnout that has come today. So we are getting ready to be blessed by uh, praise and worship. Um, we have Miss Jamila Davis and her daughters, Kyla and Aisha, who will be accompanying her. And we appreciate her. And let's just give them a, a warm round of welcome. Amen. Amen. We're so glad to be here um, with you all and to be in the right spot. I don't know if you guys heard, but this morning we went to the wrong campus. Um, I was on the phone with Miss Anita and she was like, are you, where, where are you? Are you across from Watkins or are you? in the other location. I was like, I'm in front of a fountain. And she's like, oh, no, you're in the wrong spot. I, I could feel my stomach just drop. And I was just like, oh, my goodness. So we jumped back in the car. And I was just reminded of just how God just reminds us so many times that we are so greatly loved, even when we mess up. And in homeschooling, there is nothing like just blowing it, you know, buying the wrong curriculum and find out in the middle of the year that you need to just kind of pivot and readjust and anything. And I know that for me and for my kids, that God's love has just been so amazing. So we just want to sing a song about God's love today and just to remind you that in the midst of everything, that one thing remains. His love never fails and it never gives up. Amen. Amen. Separate 
and it never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, and never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, and never runs out on me. Your like praise and worship, right? Amen. Amen. And to, to see a mom with her children and, and oh gosh, that, that, that was just what we needed. So that is the assurance that I have, I trust you have, that God's love never fails us, nor our children. It never runs out. So we are, I will welcome up Miss Simona to uh, begin our vendor spotlight. Is it afternoon yet? Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Just to know, I'm so excited to see everybody here. I love homeschooling. I've homeschooled mine all to the end, two of them. So I am so proud to see all of you parents here today. So with that being said, let's introduce our vendors, um, starting with HSLDA, the representative from HDSL, um, SLDA. Would you come forth, please? Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Catherine. I'm here to talk a little about HSLDA. So HSLDA stands for Homeschool Legal Defense Association. Um, it's a nonprofit advocacy organization that makes homeschooling possible by protecting homeschooling families and equipping them to provide the best education experience for their children. We have been trusted HSLDA for over 35 years to care for homeschooling families as we safeguard their freedom and secure the future of home education. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we will have Shabbat Christian Academy Homeschool, one of my favorites. Miss Yolanda Stansel. Hey, everybody. Shabbat. Look, the most important thing about Shabbat is, do you know what Shabbat means? Shabbat means high praise. And that's what we do. Even when we provide our education, we do everything big because God does everything big. And Shabbat consists of a preschool from ages two to five. It consists of a Shabbat Christian Academy from K through eight, um, a homeschool program um, that does all ages now. We're just adding back in a group for high school. Woo! Um, and we have before and after care. And we have a school age preschool and um, for summer preschool and school age summer enrichment. We just have it all. So I'm just saying, Shabbat, the website is shabbatca.org. Thank you. Thank you. And next we'll have BJU Press Homeschool Home Works by Precepts, Ms. Janelle Miller. Hi, I'm Belinda Parrish because Janelle. <laughs> Janelle works in the office, and she doesn't come to these things, but I go to all of them, and I've been doing it for 30 years, so if I can homeschool as a homeschool mom, you can too. And just so you know, BJU Press has been saying, Mom, you can do it since pre-COVID. So you can do it, and like I said, if anybody can do it, I can. We are full, biblically-based worldview critical thinking skills from K3 through 12th grade plus your electives. We have parents can do the teaching, we have online classes, and we have DVD classes that all include papers, books, and you can still, they're not, they're already pre-recorded. So I want you to know that if you want these kinds of things, Lanessa mentioned it earlier today, and I just, I, it's all we've done for the last 22 years, so thank you. Thank you. That was a setup. Y'all know that was a setup. Okay, so next we will have National Homeschool Academy, NHA, and we'll have the husband of Miss Anita Gibson, Mr. Glenn Gibson. Oh, another setup. Look at there. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. 
press conference is phenomenal. Okay. Yes. We have with us today our uh, program assistant, Natalie Burton. Miss Natalie Burton, she's going to share with us about the homeschool Academy. Thank you, Uncle Glenn. I call him Uncle Glenn because he, he helped raise me for a while there. Um, so I'm here to tell you about National Homeschool Advocacy. We are an online organization that provides support, um, community, resources, education, and much more for our parents and families that are homeschooling. Um, I was actually able to talk with a lot of you today at the Vendors Open and um, get you guys signed up because we would love to connect with you. If you are a new homeschooling family and you're not exactly sure where to start, we have resources within the DMV. And one thing that I'd like to mention is that um, our heart is really to provide a place that centralizes family of color and diverse backgrounds. Um, we are blessed to work with and partner with um, families of all backgrounds, but um, that diversity and representation is something that is very important to us. So um, we would love to connect with you. Our website is nhaonline.org. So please come and visit us at our table or online, and we love to connect with you. Thank you. <laughs> Woo, they just keep setting me up, but it's okay. All right, the next speaker is our very own Miss Anita Gibson, a rep representing Apologia. Come on down. So Apologia is an amazing curriculum. When we, we started using them, we it was just science. And now I'm saying they have Bible and all different kinds of things. But they, we have their uh, curriculums at the table. You may want to come and take a look. Very colorful for the, uh, for the younger people. Uh, biblically uh, based and just an amazing resource. They are sponsors for uh, the, the conference. They were not able to send a representative, but I just want to say thank you to them for supporting us. So come see us. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Anita. All right. Next, we will have popcorn munchies. Yay. <laughs> It's always about the food. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Shanice Alexander. I'm actually the co-founder of Popcorn Munchies. I say co-founder because my children are also the co-founders. I was the inspiration behind them. We specialize, we're a popcorn company specializing in caramel popcorn, and we also offer it with uh, pecans, caramelized pecans. It's a home-based business. Um, check out our story on how we got started. I believe you will literally get in, fall in love with the story before you even taste our popcorn. But also, um, the popcorns that heavily taste in your mouth, too. But uh, check us out at Popcorn Munchies, the number four dot com. Thank you. And I'm about less sugar, and it tastes good. <laughs> Those kids are off the chain. All right, Bridge Tutorial Ministries will be next. Kelly Blank and Kelly Blake and Megan Heath. Yes, come on down. Thank you. Hello, everyone. We are Bridge Tutorial Ministries. I'm Kelly Blake. Uh, this is a half of our leadership team, Trina Ferguson, Lynn Jurdall, and we are a tutorial for middle school through high school. We offer um, group classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays in person. We are, next year, we were in Bowie. Next year, we'll be meeting in Gambrels off Rydell Road at Faith Community Church. And Trina's going to. All right. So we do focus on core classes. However, sometimes we do electives. And um, we've had running classes last year where some of the students actually participated in different marathons. So we try to make sure that things are hands-on. Definitely college prep because we don't want to set your student up. Um, Kelly said we're meeting in Gambrose this year. Normally we're in Bowie, but they had to, um, they're doing some construction on a site that we normally uh, meet on, meet at. Um, and let's see, we don't, ha all our classes are not full quite yet. Um, we have two English classes that are full and one middle school class that's full. Um, however, most of, middle school is most of middle school is full now. All right, however, if you want more information, please visit Bridge, B R I D G E. Tutorial. Dot net. Dot net. <laughs> <laughs> Dot net. Okay. Anything else? I think that's All right. It. Thank you. Come visit our table. Thank you. Nice, nice. And next we will have 
um, Miss Trina. We will have Trina Cares. Hi again. All right, so um, my, my name is Trina Ferguson and my company is Trina Cares, LLC. And the reason why I came up with Trina Cares is because I started seeing, like I'm, I have this passion for student athletes. And I started um, because I just kept seeing these different stories of students wanting to play in college, but being told, well, you homeschool so you can't. And I was like, mm, that's not nice. So, <laughs> so I literally dove in. And um, I started, actually, I started with group tutoring. And so I do group tutoring at Bridge. Um, and then I also do group tutoring at Shabak. And I think I did, I think I can't remember what class I did. I think I did government. And so um, I'm, I can be kind of animated. And so I love, I love working with kids, but I love really, really working with student athletes because I don't like the word can't. And when someone says you can't, I was like, oh, that's a challenge for me. So I took on that challenge and um, that's basically what I do. I consult and I also tutor because I want the student athletes to be what we call the golden ticket. I don't want them just to get athletic scholarships. I want them to be so like just, just at a point where a college can't say no. So I want them to go in with academic scholarships and athletic scholarships I do not guarantee that. However, I want them to be the golden ticket and I want homeschoolers, other homeschoolers to know that you can do it too. I also wrote a book, Lessons Learned from My Homeschool Day, because this was not my idea to homeschool. It was all God's idea. I said no and he kept saying yes. So I did it and I wrote a book because one day I was sitting on my steps crying and I was like, somebody has to be going through what I'm going through. And so I started writing down my lessons that I've learned. They're not always good lessons, but they're lessons. And they're lessons that taught me a lot. Like for me, I always say homeschool actually grew me up. Didn't really, it grew my children up, but it really, really made me grow up. And so if you want a book, visit Trina Cares LLC at the, in the vendors. My son is there. We, that was our first. He's the reason why we started homeschooling. And we graduated him this year, so I'm excited. So yes, I've been on this emotional roller coaster. I'm like, I need you to go. And then the next day, I'm like, please don't leave me. So, so he's in there. Um, he's he'll be in there selling my books today. They're ten dollars. So please come on by. And if they sell out, I'll make sure that I get your information and I will send you one. Okay. Thank you, Miss Trina. All right. Next, we have Beltway Montessori Children's House. Somebody come to represent. There you go. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kristen Worry, and I'm representing Beltway Montessori today. Um, my husband and I are very different. He is from Sierra Leone, West Africa, and I grew up right outside Washington, D.C. He is Muslim. I was raised strictly Roman Catholic, although I'm not that now. Don't tell my dad. Um, and we have very different ideas about how to raise our children because we were raised very differently. But we came together with this Montessori approach. For me, I wanted my child respected and loved for the individual that they were and that they were nourished and they were supported on their journey, not what journey we thought they needed. And my husband liked that in preschool, they learn about the continents and we're not the only place on the planet and that everyone lives differently everywhere and that we have to be active and responsible and conscious in how we live in this global community. Um, so Beltway Montessori, uh, that was brought me to Beltway. That's what brought me to Montessori. Um, we started this co-op uh, when the Montessori schools closed in PG County for a number of reasons. And we still wanted this environment for our kids. And so we've got a group of parents who are coming together and we've struggled for five years to keep this afloat. And this year we feel like we got the train rolling. Um, so this year we provide drop-off tutoring for children kindergarten through sixth grade. We are providing homeschool um, consulting and support for all parents, um, but there's a group program for children under five where our primary directress will help show you how to help your child be independent and build that confidence at home with things like getting their own water, pouring, cleaning, setting the table, just feeling more in control of their daily life. Um, 
and so yeah, come check us out. We're in Greenbelt. Our um, website is beltwaymontessori.com and come say hi. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we will have Franklin Homeschool Services. Enden Franklin. Enid Franklin. Oh, Enid. Thank you. All these setups. Here you go. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am Enid Franklin. This is Brittany Williams, and we are Franklin Homeschool Services. Between the two of us, we have about 30 years of homeschooling experience. Um, uh, we do two things. On one side, we have the consulting side, and that is mostly helping families um, find the right curriculum. Um, and we know it's easy to ask, you know, your homeschooling friend or neighbor, what curriculum do you use? Then you use it, it doesn't work. That's because you're not working your homeschool. You're trying to work somebody else's. So what we do is we talk to you. We ask you 50 million questions to try to get an idea of what you're looking for, your, uh, your child's strengths, weaknesses, budget, whatever. We look at the whole, uh, the whole picture and we help uh, find a curriculum for you. Or we can even help you build one. Um, based on your child's interest. Um, on the other hand, we have um, a new website that will be up and operational by September 1st called My Portfolio Page. And it will allow homeschoolers to create their entire portfolio all online. And so, you know, over time you upload your samples, you can create a review form. If you want grades, attendance, whatever, it'll all be in one place. And then when it's time for your review, you hit a button, you can either send it out or you can print it off and put in a little cute little notebook for your kid to have forever. So um, you can come and see us at our table. Right now, the website is on sale for $20 for the year if you sign up um, soon. <laughs> so thank you. Oh, yes. Myportfoliopage.net. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, next we'll have Miss Becky Kang for Becky Kang Education. Come on down. Yes, Miss Kang. Hey, thank you. Um, my name is Becky Kang, and I um, I know Simona. I've taught her boys years ago, um, but I have been teaching probably for over thirty years. I'm sixty two. Um, probably longer than that. But I, I have settled upon three, um, maybe four subjects um, that I, I just love. I love words. I love words. I was in a seminar one time and they said, teach children to love words and to love the word. And I'm like, oh, I like that. I can do that. I can do that. Um, I just, I love memorizing. I love teaching vocabulary. I actually, hey, can you hold this? Hey, you're a holder. I created this. I wrote this. It's called Picture This Word, um, a visual approach to learning vocabulary. And what I did was I, um, I, I had a lot of Latin students saying, I don't like Latin. I'm like, what? What's wrong with Latin? You don't know your vocabulary. Let me show you how to memorize vocabulary. And so I used an image approach an image. I actually PowerPointed 825 words from the book WordSmart published by Princeton Review. These were SAT words, but I had a student, a fabulous artist, uh, drew 825 words. Now she did it three times. The third time I said, I'll pay you for it. Um, oh, you want to see it? I will. Uh, you can see it. Hey, I'll let you see it. But it is great words. They're great words. And, um, oh, you don't really want to see it. Okay. Yeah, you can see it. Uh, <laughs> but, oh, you're an artist. This girl had no skill. Oh, how much time do we have? Okay, I got to talk faster. Um, but she, she had no, uh, what do you call it? a class in, do you know she's going to school for art now? She is, she's really good. Samantha Kent, Kim Kent's daughter. Praise God. So, so anyways, your child, if they take that WordSmart class, it's called a WordSmart vocabulary. They learn 825 words through using an image. So, um, how am I different? 
I, I'm the Mary Poppins of um, education. And I am. I am. And I believe with every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. You find the fun and snap the jobs again. So, what? It's time to leave? All right. No, wait, one more. So I do teach a music class, and I teach them about classical composers, people like Bach and Beethoven and Mozart and Handel and Haydn and Rachmaninoff and Debussy and Ravel. And they learn these people. They learn the top 25 things that are important, like, I don't know, how you got started. Handel's father said, don't be a musician, be a lawyer. Um, you know, and they learn their top 10 songs. I have a music class. All my classes are online. So I teach music. Hey, hold that. I teach Latin. I teach Latin. And, and again, we need to teach kids how to decode words. Words are fun. You know that E-X-I-T above the door? E-X means out. I-T is an irregular verb. He goes. And so I guess this is my exit. Out she goes. But I do have a website, Becky Kang Education. Is that it? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I just want to. I just want to say something about this. At this point, um, Miss Kang taught my sons for four or five years this Latin. Latin helps you understand English, and therefore they are now much more critical thinkers. Trust me, words mean a lot. Somebody can't tell them they came from this and they came from that. Anyway, don't get me to preaching up here. Let me move on. Hey, um, the next, the next person we would like to have come up. I love art, play, learn. Miss Meredith Kanitz, come on down. Thank you. Hi, so I'm Meredith Connitz with Art Play Learn. Uh, Art Play Learn is a universally inclusive home away from home for homeschoolers and everyone else, actually. Um, we deliver programs both in person and online. Our multi-subject tutorials are available for preschoolers all the way through high school. We also have an infant and toddler enrichment program and adult programming. Um, so Art Play Learn, creates customized curriculum for the people who are in each session. Um, it is student responsive, so if we start with something that isn't working for the group that we have, we shift <laughs> and we make it work. We figure out what's, gonna, what's going to work and what worked one week may not work the next week and we're okay with that. Um, we encourage our students to express themselves even if the expression is not what we'd like to hear. Just put it that way. Um, <laughs> we encourage peace and positivity, um, and we teach social um, social interactions um, along with our academic learning. Um, so art, play, learn is exactly what it sounds like. We learn through art and play. We do game-based and play-based, project-based, um, and creative learning projects. Um, a lot of integrations, which means that we find the natural overlap between multiple subjects, and so we are practicing skills in multiple subjects at the same time. Um, we have tutorials, we have individual subject classes, we have clubs, and we are looking for brass players. So if there's anybody here who plays a brass instrument, we need more people for our brass ensemble in particular. Um, our new location, our new center is located right off the intersection of routes 295 and 197. Um, and it has windows that open. So we have really ideal COVID precautions because we can open the windows to get maximum air exchange. We have me medical grade air purifiers um, and a lot of the rooms have uh, sinks right in the room for washing your hands frequently. Uh, and we also have a beautiful playground that's about a three minute walk from our door that we take full advantage of. Um, so we hope that you'll come out and see us. You can find us online at www.artplaylearn.com. Um, if you're interested in summer programs, slash summer is where you'll find that. Um, reach out to me anytime. Thank you so much. That's why I love homeschool. We can teach them to their bent. Because surely my son was the art play man. Woo! 
Next, we will have Colony Inc. by uh, Maro Khalil. Hi everyone, so uh, my name is Dr. Khalil. This is my first time here. Thank you so much for welcoming me in your space. Um, I'm gonna start with the story as an icebreaker because I'm not used to public speaking. I'm used to standing behind a stack of uh, medical records and uh, <laughs> writing notes. I'm a pediatrician. Um, I just transitioned into uh, uh, public health. So basically, this is what happens. You guys walk into the office and this is an age old question that you know, the pediatricians get asked, talk to my son, talk to my daughter. And I'm thinking, you know, I have 15 minutes. Oh my God, what am I going to, what am I getting myself into? So 10 years ago, I started researching child development. And so to answer these questions, I developed Kilone. So Kilone is an Urdu word for toys. I started this to break the stereotype because everybody who looked at, you know, Pakistani immigrants, they were just two things. Oh, this is just going to be a physician or this is just going to be an engineer. When I started homeschooling my son, I wanted him to see me in different in a different view. So I said that we're going to start a toy store. But then it exploded into other things. At Kilone, I do three things. So we address self-drive self-regulation and self-awareness i know it's not sexy there's these are not stem buzzwords you know but it's very important so as a young child anybody who doesn't have self-regulation who's not aware and who does not have self-drive is not going to metamorphosize into whatever you know you want them to be so to address this we i do two things we do bilingual story times it's it sounds simple but it's it's really good to hear and see people who've done great things and who look like you you know in your own language and from other countries what that helps you with is that you become aware that you know there are people who look like me who can do great things children cannot do stuff if they can't see it you have to model for them sometimes we're not a good model so we can have other people who've done great stuff and they are able to you know it's able to be translated into stories and then bilingual stories why i do is i'm a polyglot i can speak multiple languages but this is a sphere that is very expensive for people to access because tutoring another language is expensive what i did is i partnered with the university of maryland extension office i'm sure you guys know about the forage program so the forage office has a new clover program which is ages five to nine we do we do beginner story times in multiple languages and we do handiwork so it's five dollars per month the last Sunday and before you guys dismiss me thinking that this is not for my kid and my I have teenagers the program offers your teens or high schoolers credit for high school and also their volunteer hours if they want to come work with us um, the second thing I do is handiwork obviously because we are now jumped on the stem train you know handiwork has gone off the wagon so we do watercolor painting, hand, you know, clay modeling, sloid. I was new to sloid. It's called, it's paper folding just for somebody who doesn't know. I didn't know that. So these types of things that are not offered anywhere, I do them. Um, that's pretty much it. Please consider visiting me. Um, we are in Glen Burnie and we have an open house on August 1st, which has free face painting. If you have kids, please bring us. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, next, we will have Miss Natalie Mack. Come on down. Oh, I have the mic. Oh, come in. Yes. Okay. So, my company is Natalie Mack LLC, and so after 22 years and still counting homeschooling, we graduated four to college, and two of those have finished graduate school. One is an honors college student at George Mason, and um, and one is working with a nonprofit. We still have a rising 10th grader to uh, to do well and to get through. And so after that 22 years, I have decided, and obviously to put all that experience together into a 
really nice journal book. It's 101 Tips for Homeschoolers. And I have the tips. I also have a description and I have some lines for journaling. And so it's really a good book to help you kind of like basically love your homeschool experience. That is the subtitle. And so I am exhibiting here um, with the assistance of my husband. We have a table there in the exhibit hall. I also have a, a website and a Facebook page, Natalie Mack. Um, so it's easy to find as well as um, I do speaking and obviously authorship of uh, books and articles. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, moving on, we have EFM Educational Consultants. Could everybody just, we want to move a little faster so we stay with time, so, so we can get everybody in. Thank you. Hi, um, just I'm not going to take long because I know there are a couple people, another yeah, I think so. And there are a couple of people waiting, but um, I am representing EFM Educational Consultants and uh, we have an educational consulting company. Um, and we basically will uh, support lots of um, homeschoolers. Our company was designed out of the desire to support struggling learners and specifically those students with disabilities. And so um, a lot of what we do is tutoring, but we also um, create classes, um, small group classes for homeschoolers that include students with disabilities in them. So right now we are running a series of math classes, uh, primary, intermediate, all the way through high school, through algebra, that includes students with disabilities. The, um, the, stu the classes are authentically small, uh, uh, probably don't go over five, so that um, everything can be individualized, but uh, we also create a lot of community support activities that are um, ongoing on a monthly basis to include um, students with disabilities, because a lot of times students with disabilities are only able to um, be with other students with disabilities. So um, we enable uh, activities for students to be with other non-disabled students. So that's kind of what EFM is all about. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, next, we will have Empowering Learning Institute by Angela Page. Angela Page, Empowering Learning Institute. And, um, Uh, let me see. I'm Angela Page, and I am the head educator and children's author book from Empowering Learning Institute. Um, I'm a retired teacher from Prince George's County public school system, science educator. So, uh, and I wasn't prepared to retire. I had to retire on disability. So I had to, I started Empowering Learning Institute, which is a STEM enrichment program. Um, and I offer STEM enrichments to set Saturdays a month and also um, during the summer to four week programs. So I've started this even before I retired and I have a lot of children have graduated this year from high school and they are going in to STEM programs. I consult, give you information on how to set up your college um, your college schedule because you need to go in and tell people your needs. And there's a certain way that our students need to set up their college schedules to be successful in, in science, technology, and engineering. Um, and two, because reading is so very fundamental it develops our thinking and writing skills and so many people are not comfortable with writing where writing is a form of activism i've started developing my own children's book 
okay? And this is another project and some of my students who have come through Empowering Learning Institute have been paid as illustrators. So we're, you know, just really trying to give back to the community. And you can come and see me. You don't have to purchase. Give me your name and your email, and I will send information. I'm, I'll be starting a YouTube channel with reading instructions, reading activities, and story time. Thank you. Yes. I apologize. I'm just going to interrupt briefly. We do apologize because we're getting a little behind on time, but we are going to continue with the vendor spotlights. But while we continue, can these first two rows here, please go get your lunch. At this point, everything is over here. Please go ahead and start getting your lunch, these two rows here. And then once once the line kind of settles down, the rest of you all. So while we're finishing the vendor spotlights, please get your lunch. And we are not going to delay our sessions. So we're going to quickly finish with vendor spotlights and then we're going to head to session. And it's okay for you to eat in your sessions, okay? So we apologize for the delay. Uh, uh, our next um, our next vendor is um, Yawala. Yo Wala. You will live again, Dante Frost. Come on up, sir. Thank you, Simona. Uh, Good afternoon, my name is Dante Frost, and uh, the name of my company is Wala, You Will Live Again. Um, it's the Christian logo flag. It represents those who believe in the faith of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and or life after life. Um, it has a very, very profound meaning. It's in its, I'm in my third year with it, and it's just something that um, the Lord put me in stewardship of to disseminate amongst the masses. Um, I'll be down in room 227 if you want to come down and, and, and check it out. That way I can explain it to you a little bit more in detail. But it's something for all God's children. And it's uplifting and encouraging and just a constant reminder that there is life after life. So come on down to, to 227. Come on down and get your temporary crown. Or if, it, if you feel like it's not for you, just come on down and just allow me the opportunity to share with you. Thank you for uh, First uh, uh, Baptist Church of, of Glen Arden for giving me, giving me this platform to share with you all. And God bless each and every one of you all. Thank you. Uh, that's how men do it. <laughs> you know how they do. Get the words out quickly. All right. The Patuxent Home Educator of Maryland. Come on down. Another guy to represent. Yes, another man that hopefully will be quick and let y'all eat. So my name is Ed Hanko, and I have a homeschool tutorial in Bowie, Maryland for ages 6 through 13. We're a four-day-a-week drop-off program for five hours each day, so Tuesday through Friday. This is our guide in our program, Sinclair, and we are here to give you one nugget to walk away with. I got a question for you. How many of you, through your lifetime as a child, had a lemonade stand. Raise your hand. Whoever put on a lemonade stand. It's such a cool experience. We have a children's business fair that is going to happen at Bowie Bay Sox Stadium on September 11th. So now imagine your little lemonade stand had two, 3,000 customers walking by. So we ran one in April. We had kids that sold out of their product and made hundreds of dollars that day. We have kids selling books that they've written, they make walking sticks. They do all different types of things. That's the type of thing that we do in our program. I have flyers here for you. I'm going to leave them up on the front. Please take one. We would love to have you come. There is a $20 registration fee for the table, but the kids get an awesome swag bag. Lots of stuff. So Chick-fil-A is a sponsor. So you can, oh, Sorry. that's all right. So lots of fun opportunities for kids to have a real world experience in entrepreneurship. And, the, and become a lifelong learner. So thank you very much for letting me share. All right. Number two. He did it. All right. Last but not least, I just want to let you all know there are some of us rocking around who are tutors. 
We have a couple up front. I'm actually a tutor for over 20 years. I do grammar from fourth to uh, 10th grade. So I'm online. I tutor online. Some of our other, we have a math tutor. We have a elementary school tutor. So, and we have a, oh, we have two more vendors. Okay. And we have a math tutor here. So um, you guys, we have flyers around. So you can, you see me walking around, whatever. You could talk to us. Um, we have two more vendors. Come on up. I was, I didn't know. Sorry. We have one more vendor. We have actually two more. Extend. Oh, I did Okay. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, my name is Dion Dawkins. This is Ellen Jones, and we are representing Extend Homeschool Tutorial. We are a first grade through high school a la carte program in Bowie. We meet at Mount Oak Church on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, we have all of um, the core subjects. We offer all of the core subjects, math, science, social studies, and um, language arts um, through all grade levels. Um, the way our program is set up, we have um, skilled professionals um, in a variety of areas, and it is a tutor, chosen curriculum program and that was one of the questions that we got at the table whether the tutors worked with curriculum that parents chose but it's actually a tutor chosen curriculum the tutors um, put together the classes they meet with students in a classroom setting on Tuesdays and Thursdays and then they pace them through the Monday Wednesday Friday um, curriculum for them to in high school they're more working independently but for the lower grades um, Monday Wednesday and Friday will be the day that they're working with their parents at home we're in I think the first vendor room we have flyers um, at our table you can come by and chat with um, both of us we still have some availability in some of the grade levels if you're looking for something specific but we'd love to um, we'd love to see you over in the vendor hall to chat thank you Thank you. Thank you. Last but not least, come on down. Miss Simona, there's one more after her. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm so glad that Miss Tony Johnson said, "Where's your stuff?" Because I can't do all of this in one breath. So let me go for, start from the beginning. HSCC is a homeschool co-op that I started over ten years ago, and we do classes and. Legos and culinary and art and all that orchestra, all those things. And then the Lord, during the plan or pan, whichever way you want to say, demic, um, downloaded through HSLDA and Vicki Bentley and some others said, "Why don't you start a state organization?" Where's Maryland? So I started Home Educators of Maryland in 2019, and uh, we cover support groups. We cover families. We support you. So whoever you are out there as a vendor, you would we will join together. There's no benefit to me as much as it is just for us to come together as one. And last but not least, this year, well, about 20. 2021 the lord started the home the hall's way to educate and what do we do everything um we i have um, prayer partners started a, a wrote a book with her daughter so we had a book signing and introduced the children to authorship um i wrote my own book um and then we have culinary and we did a camp this year with children of the kingdom global academy which is my umbrella um so yeah there's four things but i have three on the board so i'm vanessa hall um and i just thank god for this opportunity that i was really slothful in moving in because i was tired because I have graduated my children and one is actually married so I was done and then the Lord said no you're not so here we are I thank God for Miss Anita who um, opened this up to me and all of you God bless you and heaven spot on you we have one more she said there was one more is there one more okay come on then yes. All right. Last but not least, I'm really excited to share with you that your state organization, Machi, is relaunching. For 30 years, if you've got questions, they've been answering questions. I'm on uh, the executive board team. Uh, your chairman is Sue Manning, and we're very excited. Uh, we're being supported by all 50 states. We're excited. Idaho is working on the website. It's going to launch. Uh, you can take a sneak peek by going to machimd.org 
machimd.org. We're going to have our state capital day. We're very excited about advocating for you at the Maryland State uh, Capitol. We'll have a Machi graduation, and you're hearing for the first time public, we have now a Machi convention. We are very, very excited. This is going to be a major launch, and we most importantly solicit your prayers. On our website, we'll be welcoming all of you guys who run uh, homeschool businesses, uh, so you'll be able to have your groups. And, of course, we have a special hot spotlight for all of the umbrellas in the state of Maryland. We will serve all 23 counties in the state of Maryland. So please go to www.machi, M-A-C-H-E-M-D.org. There's a place place for you to just subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Right now, our Rolodex is well over 4,000, and we want you on the list. We intend to pursue every single homeschooler so that when they run the foolishness that they ran at the last legislation, we'll be ready for them. God bless you. So um, the, the young lady said that um, the Lord told her to do it. That's because this is a ministry. Homeschool is a ministry. And so all that are doing it, you are very blessed and our children are blessed. Like I said, scripture says, train up your child to their bent. And you can do that best. One of the best ways is through homeschool. So thank you all for letting me be your spotlight leader. All right. <laughs> Okay, so as you all may have noticed, we're a little bit, those six minutes we had, <laughs> at the beginning they're gone, okay, but it's, hopefully it's, you all have been blessed and the content's been useful for you. Um, so what we are transitioning to is in here, we have developing a plan with Miss Carla Fuller, yeah, yeah, okay, developing a high school plan, specifically, all right. Um, and she will be getting started in about five minutes. So I know some of you all are still eating and you can continue, of course, through the session. Um, the vendor area is open if you're not staying in here for developing a plan for high school, as well as athletics program NCAA parent process. Trina Ferguson is in room 229 and that has just actually begun. All right. So go on there. I think I'm going to pop in and speak a little bit in there about my daughter's experience playing soccer and getting picked up for D1. Um, and then Trina has her experience. So if you're if you're interested in athletics and do homeschoolers get to get picked up for scholarships and play, they do. So um, that's a great workshop there. Then afterwards, we have another social another panel. This one's on socialization. The working mom who attended the working mom and homeschooling. I hope it was a blessing. It's always we always need a little bit more time. We always have more questions, right? So definitely, as I said at the end of that panel, you can always find us. We are accessible. We're going to be here till till you all finish and we leave, as well as many of us have ways to contact us later. So we have what about socialization panel, and I'm going to do one on transcript basics, and then you can, I think it looks like a 10 main stage, so you can come back here and do a breakout, all right? And then again, we have giveaways at the end, so please stay around. I know. Homeschool hubby, helping out. <laughs> Mr. Fuller. Yes. <laughs> A lot of high school parents. Who has high schoolers? Even if you're not homeschooling, who? Okay. All right. Who has middle schoolers? I knew that was the rest of it. If you were in high school, you got middle schoolers. You're thinking, uh-oh, I see ninth grade right there. It's looming really large, isn't it? Don't be afraid. It's so doable. It's so doable. Hopefully, you'll hear that message constantly throughout the rest of today.
Yeah, so several years ago when we began our homeschool journey in New Jersey and we were a part of a homeschool group that met and there was a session one night on homeschooling high school. My boys were little and running around, but I felt like I wanted to know what was ahead. So if you're interested, you can stay and, and, and hear more. Um, so there are many aspects to preparing for your children's education. And today we're just going to focus on the four year academic plan. And so this is the classes that your student will take that will lead to graduation and beyond. So you've seen a lot of the vendors who offer curriculum and things along those lines. What we're going to talk about today is how to put all that together. There is a sheet over there that um, he can pass out. That's my husband, Charles. He did this with me all these years. Um, and so whether you're new to homeschooling or not, high school opens up a whole new set of things for you to be concerned about, uh, but also a whole new set of opportunities and blessings as well. So um, as was said, my name is Carla Fuller, and uh, along with Ladissa and Rochelle and Natalie, I serve on the HSLDA consultation team. Specifically, I work with high school. And your membership with HSLDA gives you access to a whole team of dedicated professionals who are available to offer you guidance and support as you navigate your way on your homeschool journey. Um, and as we go along, remember that all of the things that we talk about today, you don't have to do alone. We're available, we're eager um, to help you with every aspect of planning for uh, high school. The HSLDA motto, as you've heard today, is making homeschooling possible, and we mean that deeply. I am not new to homeschooling, but I am fairly new to HSLDA, but I can tell you that this is at the very heart of who HSLDA is as an organization um, and who we are as, um, as individuals. Okay, so when you wanna make a plan for high school, there's two main considerations that you need to keep in mind. Uh, one is your state's homeschool law. Is everybody here from Maryland? Okay, so the thing that you wanna do is to make sure that you know what Maryland requires for high school. Some states do require specific subjects um, and or tests to be uh, taken in high school. So you can look on the HSLDA website um, to see how to access that information directly. When you click on the drop down for legal, you'll see a link to the state homeschool laws. And when you do that, you're going to see this, um, and then you click on your state. Uh, it's an interactive, uh, an interactive map where you're going to see your state requirements. So what do you need to do in your state in order to homeschool? Um, do you have to send in a notice of intent, set up a private school, enroll in an umbrella oversight program, which is the case in Maryland? Um, so you can see that information, and if there's any specific graduation requirements, for example, some states require that you take a health class. Some states require that you take a state-specific government class. Um, and before you can graduate and all of that information um, you can find here. In fact, you can find uh, all kinds of resources and answers to your questions on our website. Today, like I said, we're just going to talk about the four plans, um, but there's information at our website. This is probably one of the most visited sites at HSLDA, um, and you can find uh, articles about if you're just considering homeschooling your teen, um, how do you plan for their journey, which electives and extracurriculars should they do, um, things along those lines you'll find at the website okay all right so the first um, consideration is your state requirements the, the other consideration for what classes to offer is what path your student is on what their plans are what their goals are beyond graduation or uh, beyond high school and so up to now your child has been focused on home on school activities and responsibilities. And now they're starting to set their sights on their future and what they wanna do and what they wanna be out in the world. And you may have some ideas about things that you want for them to learn and to know before they set off. The word develop 
um, has, uh, somebody was talking about the power of words and the word develop has the word envelope as its root, right? So an envelope means to fold, which is obvious when you look at an envelope. Um, to develop is to unfold. And, and that's what's happening with your children. Who they are, what their talents and capabilities are, are unfolding and are becoming clearer to you, but also to them. So the subjects that they take up to this point are usually fairly general. Um, um, they have a wide scope, maybe, and they build basic fundamental learning skills. By the time they get to high school, you have the freedom to tailor their education to the unique person that you see emerging. Um, and even keeping any of your state requirements in mind, you can still, I think Lanissa maybe men mentioned something like that earlier, even after you consider some of those requirements, you can still tailor their education to them, which is really exciting. Okay, so the four steps to homeschooling through high school, one, begin with the end in mind, two, plan and then implement your curriculum, Three is rec uh, record keeping and four is graduation. Yay, always very exciting. One of the moms was talking about, you know, mixed emotions. That is definitely true. So beginning with the end in mind, home education gives you the privilege to design a four-year plan that equips and prepares your teens for their future. Um, this is a precious time in your life, in the life of your family, and it goes by so fast. Um, and so it helps to take a moment before you start anything to think about what you want at the end. Um, this is the time to also involve your child in discussions about what they might want to do. Um, for some children, this is really clear. For others, then the path comes into focus further down the road. But I know one of the things that I did, my husband and I, um, again, at the beginning, was I wrote out just dreaming. It was a time to dream and to think about, okay, at the end of this, what do I want to be true about my sons? And, you know, wrote it down and prayed about it. And uh, a lot of the things that we had set an intention for them, we see continuing to unfold for them. So it's something that doesn't just happen when they're in high school. It's something that, that continues to follow with them. All right. The second step to developing a high school plan for your student is to decide on and then to plan on the path that they're going to take. So it's picking the classes, getting the textbooks, the curriculum, signing them up for online or co-op classes. All of the, the vendors that you've heard you know, today um, will follow from the plan that you choose. So before you start on any journey, um, it's good to have a map. So those are available. Um, so as before you start on your destination, so you can plot out the subjects that your student will take. And if you do that at the beginning, along with thinking about what you want, right, maybe writing it down, take a, a minute to say, okay, for four years, this is what we're going to take. And once you have that, then you can concentrate year by year. And if you have to make adjustments in the plan, then you can always do that, right? Um, but it's always good to, uh, to to start there. And remember, there's all kinds of downloadable forms and also you know other information on the HSLDA website. Okay, the general plan is it doesn't say that. Okay, um, the general the general plan is for students who are not necessarily planning for college, um, but they're interested maybe in heading straight to the workforce. Somebody mentioned the mission field, or maybe enlisting in one of the armed services, um, or even getting training to go into one of the trades. Uh, college cost is skyrocketing, and I think everybody would agree that COVID changed a lot for everybody, changed a lot for college students, the way that a lot of colleges look, and so some students are thinking, okay, how do I, you know, make a life and a future for myself? So some of them are considering the, the, the trades. Um, and so those kids would go to maybe a certificate program or vocational school for training. This plan equips a student with a basic education that will enable them to competently pursue their work. They're still going to be citizens, people in the world, and, you know, you want them to know how to learn, how to do things. And so that plan will help you do that. Okay, so the general plan has five academic core sub subjects, you know, English or language arts, um, math, social studies or history, science, 
foreign language. And then the non-academic electives, which are phys ed, fine arts, and then and, and other electives. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Once your student has finished taking those, then they'll have between 20 to 22 credits um, that they can then use to fulfill the, the requirements that you've set for them for, for graduation. The other thing I wanted to mention is not only do you want to consider what path your student is on, you also want to consider what are your expectations for them. And so you can also have some things that you say, you know what, I just think it's really important for my child to, to know this or that. You know, for my sons, you know, and I'll tell you a little bit about them, you know, we have two sons. It was important for us, for them to know how to do their laundry, how to cook, how, you know, there's some things that we just wanted to have them leave home knowing how to do. So the general plan is for, uh, um, I'm sorry, then we have, after that, the average, see, that, I don't know why that's not showing up, that's okay. It's the average to strong college prep plan. So this is your typical college prep plan. This is for those students who are more likely to go to college. Um, it's good even if you are not sure to plan for college, especially if your student shows any aptitude for higher learning at all. Um, in fact, we often recommend that parents start off on the college plan for ninth and 10th grade, and then you can make adjustments in 11th and 12th when their plans come into sharper focus. That way, you don't have to scramble at the last minute when your child decides all of a sudden they do want to go to college and you haven't you know, you haven't done the, the, the classes. Okay. Evan. All right. So this is the average to strong college print uh, plan. Um, and so what's different? The, the subjects not necessarily, right? But the number of credits are different. You go from 20 to 22 to now 24 to 26. So um, like I said, for the most part, you're going to study the same things, but the depth you go into, the level of difficulty, and the expectations of the student increase um, as they go from a general plan to a more rigorous plan, as we'll discuss. So here are some examples. So English classes expose students to the world of words. We were talking about that. Uh, it teaches them how to think, how to express themselves well in writing and in speaking. And it exposes them to the ideas of people across different places and times. So you would include things such as, you know, composition and grammar, you know, British literature, American literature, African-American writers, um, creative writing, journalism. Those kinds of things are, are what you would plot on, um, uh, on your plan for language, language arts. And then for math, you know, you think about, you know, these requirements, but each of the subjects is designed to build something specific in us, right? And, you know, so English words, um, but math teaches a student to think critically and to solve problems. You know, a lot of students may say, I've heard my kids say, I will never use this. Why do I need to use this? Well, you will always have to solve problems. You will always have to look at a situation, analyze it, and think critically. And so math is one of those things that's just important to have for that reason alone. For a general diploma, you would uh, maybe offer, say, general math or consumer math, business math, accounting, and maybe algebra one. I know some parents who are saying, you know what, my child's not going to college, um, and you know, do they have to go to al algebra two? Not necessarily. Some parents include personal finance here. It's not T typically uh, considered a math class, particularly for those who are going to um, to college. But for those who are not, that's something that we've I've seen some parents um, include for their student. If they're headed to college, then you want to offer three to four of these, and even more if they're considering a degree in STEM, you know, science, technology, engineering, and math. All right. I don't know why that's doing that. Okay, so you would include algebra one and two, um, geometry, um, pre-calculus and trig uh, trigonometry, uh, calculus and uh, statistics for those kids who are you know really super motivated. Okay, so for history, these are the classes obviously that give them a window into the past and to help them think critically about what the future may hold. I've heard somebody say that there's two things that we as parents offer to our children. One is a mirror 
you know, we reflect to them who they are, who we see them to be and try to, you know, have them see themselves accurately. And the other is a window. We provide them a window to the world so that they can see what the world is really like. Um, and history is one of those things that helps us with that. It tells us about you know, the course of human existence, the ways of man. And so you would include courses such as, you know, um, history, geography, um, world history, uh, American history, you know, all of, all of those things. Um, and, and even some of the social studies like economics, sociology, religious studies, those are included there. And then science topics. Science also encourages critical thinking and it encourages the, the scientific process, which they can use in other areas as well of life. You know, this is what helps them ask the question, what will happen if? Right. Um, and so for a general diploma, you would offer two to three of, of science classes. So maybe physical science, general or earth science. If they're uh, considering going off to STEM programs, then you would include things like, um, you know, physics, you know, biology, anatomy and physiology, chemistry. Those would be the subjects you would do there. And then foreign languages. So these are designed to help a child learn about the language and culture of other people. The general plan indicates that foreign language is optional, but with a college prep curriculum, then you should have at least two years of a foreign language. Um, and the current guidance is that a student should take the same language all the way through. So they, you know, so for the student who say, oh, maybe I want to take this or I want to take that for a college, they want to see that because it shows some level of mastery and it shows some progression in studies. So it would be, you know, science, French, you know, all the foreign languages. Um, and uh, the, I think probably two of the subjects that are the most intimidating for parents to think about teaching in high school are math and foreign language. Um, so you can make the plan, you can set the vision for your student, but you don't have to be the one to teach everything. As you've seen, there's a lot of co-ops, there's a lot of online classes, there's dual enrollment when they get to a point where you think they are mature enough to handle being in a college, you know, a community college environment. Um, there's tutors, um, and, and there, then there are some curricula out there, they do most of the work for you, so that you don't have to, I think um, Anita mentioned earlier about, I, you know, I didn't do this in school, it doesn't, there's so many resources that are available. Our youngest son, um, Zachary, was, for, I don't know why, I don't know where this came from, but he was really interested in learning Russian. I think at the time he wanted to go into the Air Force and he was thinking about maybe a diplomatic career or something, but uh, he wanted to learn Russian, which was not coming from my husband or me. <laughs> so, um, so we enrolled him in an online program so that he could do his, you know, fulfill his foreign language uh, requirement. And then the other thing is um, fine arts. I had a nice picture there too. Oh well, um, the fine arts are those things that they engage the mind and the spirit in a way that the other subjects just can't do. You, you know, we we heard the the singers over here. Um, it's so important. So just using sound and color, it's a very it, it up lifts the spirit. It, I think that these things, I don't think that they're elective. Actually, that's what electives are. They mean that you can elect to take them or not. I don't think that that should be the case for fine arts. I think it's just too important for human beings. And I think we we, it, we just transcend, you know, what we can touch and, and see. And I think that's important. But anyway, um, so activities like art, painting, drawing. The young lady who also sang, I noticed her in one of the other sessions, she was drawing and she's also very good at that as well. So obviously that's a, a dominant feature of her of her um, brain development. But anyway, um, art, painting, drawing, sculpture. Um, and you know, when times are hard, I don't know if you sing, if you, there's, it gives you a sense of control over something. That's why I think it's important. Um, music, musical instruments, choir, um, worship music, theater, dance, drama, and photography. And originally, poetry was considered one of the fine arts. And then we have physical education. 
So some schooler, homeschoolers have access to group gym classes. We did when our boys were in high school. So there's sports teams. Um, our boys played with um, the uh, Eastern uh, Christian Conference, which is a network of homeschool uh, kids who play different sports. Our boys played football. It's competitive. Some of the kids have even been um, scouted for, for college um, um, teams, volleyball, basketball, and the like. But this is a place where you can be um, creative. Um, the idea is you want to have your child moving. You want them active. Some parents even include um, some instruction in health and nutrition, um, walking, weightlifting, gym. You know, community centers off, offer opportunities for you to, to have your child be um, be physical, swimming. Um, Okay, so you have the the general plan, the average uh, to strong college prep plan, and then the third plan uh, to consider is rigorous. And this is the plan that you would use for um, super motivated students. Those are the students that are interested in going to the Ivy League schools, um, military academies such as the Air Force Academy or something along those lines. And for the rigorous plan, you see um, that the credits uh, go from 20 in the general plan to um, 26 to about 30 credits um, total over the course of the four years of their education. Um, and the, they include the same core subjects. But at this point, there is an expectation that the students will take all of these all four years of high school. Um, and there's also the expectation of more intensity and more challenging coursework. Um, this is why there can be more emphasis on them taking AP classes or attending college, earning dual enrollment credits. Um, these both show a student's ability to meet the, the standard that's usually set at these more selective colleges and programs. The AP um, stands for you know, advanced placement, de designed many, many years ago to give students the opportunity to earn credit early for those, again, those super motivated kids that are definitely headed off to college. Um, they're administered by the college board and they offer college level curricula to high school students. To earn AP credits, the class has to be taught by an approved instructor, instructor using approved texts and assignments. So homeschool parents usually are not the ones who are going to be able to offer these themselves. Um, usually they have to do so at an outside institution. HSLDA Online Academy does offer AP courses to, um, to uh, individuals, uh, private schools, co-ops, et cetera. And the students who pass the class are then able to document that on their transcript, which is very helpful in college admissions decisions. And they're also able to sit for the AP exam in that subject to potentially earn college credit if they get a score of three or four. Very, very hard to do. But if you look at HSLDA Online Academy, you see the average um, the you know the global um, score nationally, and then the the academy average score, which is actually pretty pretty good. Um. And then the third step to developing a high school plan is record keeping. Keeping good records as you go along is so important in minimizing stress and in ensuring that you're heading in the right direction that you want to go to with your students, right? So you set the plan, you mapped it all out, and then every year now you want to make sure that you're collecting the information that, that you need. So some category of records are those you just want to maintain for your own purposes, your own planning, your own notes. Um, other people may not necessarily see any of these lesson plans, uh, you know, tests that you give their grades. Those are things that you will keep, you know, for your own purposes. Um, and then maybe course descriptions are in there with, with one um, exception, which I'll tell you about. Um, and then the others that you'll need to keep in mind are things that you might be asked for at some point you know, medical records, contact information, and you want to keep a log of the extracurricular activities that your student is involved in. Um, that's also important. Um, and then the next category are the records that you prepare that will be used to open doors for your students to jobs, scholarships, and college admissions. And one of the most important of these is the transcript. All right. Um, let's see what I say. Uh, hold on a second. 
Yeah, transcripts. Okay. Um, so these transcripts are used to keep yourself accountable to the plan that you've set. Um, again, adjustments can be made to a document that's already in, in process. Uh, HSLDA has a number of resources available to members to help with writing up transcripts. We have a transcript service. Um, um, that they, uh, you can subscribe to, that they maintain the transcripts for you. And then we also have templates that you can download from our website and, you know, do on your own. And one of the functions that we have, in fact, one of the main functions that um, we do as consultants is help people with their transcripts. There's going to be a transcript session, I think, after this one, uh, um, at some point, um, after this um, time. Um, and, you know, because often, you know, parents choose to do their own. And uh, so anyway, this is such an important document. We want to make sure that it's something that you feel comfortable with and confident in. And that is going to be the one of the, the keys that's going to open the doors to your student's um, future. Um, the other document that's important for you to have is, um, it, and I didn't hear a lot of people talking about this early on, one is a letter of recommendation for your student. Those who know them academically and those who know them personally, you don't necessarily think that you want to gather those as you go along. That's very important. If you have a coach, somebody at your church, uh, somebody, uh, maybe they have a part-time job, a boss, or if they do do a co-op class or something along those lines, and you want to see if early if you can get that person to write a letter of recommendation for you. Particularly for homeschool, if you get to the point where you want to do college entrance they're going to want those external, that ex, one of our consultants, I think they called it, you know, external um, or independent evidence of academic ability. Um, they want to know that it's not just mommy saying, you know, that, you know, they're, they're good or whatever. Um, and, and then the other thing um, that I was actually a little bit surprised uh, about was the counselor's report. When we began the process of, you know, applying for colleges for our boys, many of the schools that they applied to um, wanted to, the guidance counselor's report. And that's just one of the many hats that we wear as homeschoolers. You're the teacher, you're the administrator, um, and you are the guidance counselor. Um, and so you um, may be asked to give a statement about your student you know, what strengths and limitations they have that will have some bearing on their next chapter. Um, and so you also might want to, as you're, you know, kind of thinking with the end in mind, maybe include in there a, a thought about why you homeschool and what approaches you're going to take. Because I remember that was one of the things that was asked of us. Um, and, you know, to be honest, it was uh, something that was actually a good exercise for me at the end because it helped me to see that what we set out to do, you know, the Lord actually helped us to uh, accomplish. All right, so this is just a sample of a yearly final grade transcript, uh, which is, that's the format that most people are familiar with. It lists the classes that your child took to fulfill their graduation requirements um, that you set no matter where they were taken. Um, it records the final grades and the credits earned in that class. Um, it gives an academic summary of the cumulative grade point average um, and also, let's see, can I raise that? Nope. Um, and it provides an explanation of certain items in the notes section. So, you know, where those are, in your transcript, you don't color code them. This is just an example. But in the notes, you'll see um, an explanation of something. Some people put their grading scale in there. Some put, you know, this class was taken at this, there, or the other place. So that's important. All right, so many parents want to know how to determine credits for classes, and um, and we can you know go over that in, in the next slides. So these are the three main ways: um, between seventy-five to eighty percent completion of a curriculum or a text, you want log hours or dual enrollment. If you choose a curriculum from a, a, a reputable publisher or an online provider, you can look to see how many credits are earned upon uh, completion of the text. Or you can grant a credit once 70 to 80% of that material has been covered. So you have some freedom in how you use a test. 
uh, text, you want to make sure that your student is learning. Um, um, especially if they're going to be going into other learning environments, you want to make sure that those that that level is there. But you also want to be able to maintain some freedom to decide what you want to cover or not. This is gives you the ability to do that, but also get, you know grant them a full credit for the work that they have done. And then the other way to determine a credit is to use what's called Carnegie units. Um, so one credit is earned in a certain number of hours devoted to instruction and activities across the academic year. Um, it, it was just developed as a measure of the amount of time that a student has studied a subject, right? So in the beginning, when Carnegie units were first um, used, a total of 120 hours in one subject, meeting about four to times um, four to five times a week for about 40 to 60 minutes over 36 to 40 weeks earned one high school credit. Currently, um, uh, we see 150 hours for the core academic subjects, which is about five hours a week. Um, um, for the per week for about 30 at least 30 weeks or 180 for some of the science classes that should include an hour of lab I think when we were talking about science I forgot to mention that particularly for a college uh, prep po program you want to make sure that those sciences include a lab portion and there's tons of resources uh, online to know how to do that if you don't have access to a class or to a co-op and then 120 hours for elective PE, fine arts, um, and then 60 hours um, for half a credit is how those are usually earned. Um, and then many parents enroll their students in community college where they can earn both high school credit and college classes. One of the benefits of community college is that they just have access to things that we as homeschoolers don't have to scramble around and do. It's right there um, offered in, in the college. Um, they can take classes that to fill in some of the core requirements. They can also take classes that they're interested in. Um, that um, And it also gives them an opportunity to try, you know, to, to try out college um, uh, in an environment while they're still safe in your home you're still monitoring they're still accountable to you but it teaches them also how to be accountable to another teacher professor which is really important when they're making that transition from homeschool to the college environment um, different states call it different things I know in Virginia we call it dual enrollment and you're able to decide uh, for the most part how you want to convert those but traditionally um, you it's one high school credit for each three to five college course taken in about an eight to 15 um, week semester. So in addition to dual enrollment, the transcript is also going to include the classes that you take at other places, the online classes, the co-ops. Um, and remember, you oversee the curriculum, but you don't have to teach everything. Um, and so if you don't have access to some of those things, it, obviously Maryland, Maryland is very rich and very unique. New Jersey, where we came from originally, did not have as many opportunities as, as I see that you, know, you have here in Maryland. But HSLDA has an online academy that also provides a full array of, of academics, in addition to the AP classes that I mentioned to you earlier. Um, we offer a $50 to $100 discount per class for HSLDA members. Um, and there's an early bird special for registration in March uh, when you can get maximum savings on um, your course. Um, HSLDA online academy, unlike some online programs, is highly interactive. Um, you know, and uh, so it's so it's something that's important. And we're going to be talking about socialization in a minute. Um, and so that may be one of the things that you want to keep in mind, uh, that they get the benefit of an online program, um, but they also get the benefit of some opportunity to interact with other teachers and other students. Um, and the other aspect of record keeping is grading. Um, and grading is also something that causes concern for parents. You can find out um, more information on our website, um, on our grading page, um, like how to grade high school assignments, um, you know, how do you grade a high school course, how to use a rubric or a standard 
Um, the one thing that we recommend is to decide fairly early how you're going to grade your child and to let them know so that they know what's expected of them. And it does it, and it's something that can pile up. It causes sometimes a lot of guilt, a lot of anxiety for parents about that grading. But there are ways, the, the main reason for it is so that they can help and again have an, something external that they're accountable to. And it also gives them feedback. It helps them know how they're doing, how they're learning. It gives you an opportunity to, to, um, to know how they're doing. Um, and, you know, it can be as simple as a check system, you know, um, a check plus if they did a really good job on it, you know, or a check, okay, you gave it to me, it's it's okay, a check minus, yeah, you know, we need to work on this if it's late or something along those lines. So it can be easy. And one of the things that, you know, the consultants can help you do if you're an HSLDA member is help you with that, that grading as well. Okay. So it can be a simple uh, plan for grading, um, a, a grade book, you want to add um, percentage grades, utilize weighted averages, all of those things. Um, for, and for the non-academic electives, you want to set a reasonable standard. Um, just in a, in a way for you to assess how your student is doing. I had a, a parent who uh, I spoke to, her son was really involved in computers and she's like, I don't know how to act, how to assess that. I don't know how he's doing, but I bet you know someone who is very good at computers, somebody that you can have him, have your child explain to this person this thing and then let them give you feedback of, about what your child knows. So sometimes you can get feedback, not just with you, but with someone else who may have some experience with that subject. All right. Um, one of the things that um, home homeschoolers have the time to do sometimes is to pursue interests and activities outside of act uh, academics. And sometimes even more than coursework, these are the activities that form what may become a lifelong interest or even a career path. Um, they tell not just how your student performs in school, but also who they are. And college admissions counselors want to see what a student can add to the school. And so they ask for these uh, activities on, on uh, applications. Um, these are best described on an extracurricular sheet um, rather than on the transcript, which is just a list of grades and credits and things. The extracurricular sheet, you know, one of the, we say it's like your brag sheet. This is where you can talk, it's, it's a resume is actually what it is. And it should be on one form like a resume and talks about what kinds of activities your student is involved in. It used to be that if you were, you know, super smart and you got really good grades, you could pretty much, you know, write your ticket and go to any college you want. Nowadays, they want a, a well-rounded student, right? And so, and so many colleges, there's some students like, I got straight A's, I got, you know, you know, you know, uh, uh, high scores on the SAT, why didn't I get accepted? Because this other student showed leadership, they showed initiative, they had a business, they did this, this, that, and the other thing. So making time to build in extracurricular activities for your student is extremely important. And again, it may be, I think the extracurriculars and the electives may be the thing that sparks something in your children. Our, our, um, our oldest is very interested. In fact, I didn't mention our oldest is 24. He graduated from our homeschool and went on to pursue um, a political science degree. And our youngest is in the middle of his engineering degree um, at, at Virginia Tech. And for both of them, um, even though they were homeschooled in the same place, they are very, their records, their transcripts, their extracurriculars are very, very different because we were able to gear um, their activities to what they were interested in. So my one son was very interested in civics. That was his extracurricular activity. And the youngest um, was able to be involved in robotics. And that's one of the things that he wants to do as an electrical engineering uh, major at, um, at his school. Um, and so those are very, very important. And then the fourth step is graduation. Um, and so once your son or daughter has met the requirements that you've set, it's time for them to graduate from your home school. Um, this is a very special time. It should be celebrated in some way as an accomplishment, not just by them, but also by you. <laughs> Have a party, go on a vacation, do something to celebrate. You've been right on that journey with them. Um, and, uh, it, and so that's, that's very, very important. Um, there are many groups and organizations that offer graduation ceremonies for homeschoolers so that you can mark this um, really important transition. Um, 
you will have the privilege of then granting them their high school diploma, which they will then walk off into their future. And um, all of our children leave us with still more work to be done. High school graduation is not the end of their education. It's not the end of anything. As Anita talked about, you know, I'm a very different person than I was before I started this journey. They will be and you will be. You have been growing and developing, unfolding together. And, um, and so I think that it's something um, to celebrate, but also to know that your children um, will still develop, but they will take all of the tools and the lessons lessons and the things that you've imparted to them to their next endeavor. And the main thing that you've taught them to do is to learn. And, and I bet one thing that's true for most uh, homeschool students is a, is a, a, a really good sense of, of self-awareness that they will take with them. Um, and so one of the things that you're able to do is to give them a personalized um, diploma, cap and gown. You can do that from um, and get that from the HSLDA store. Um, and for those of you who are not yet uh, members of, of HSLDA, it's about a hundred. It's one hundred and thirty dollars a year, twelve dollars a month. And as has already been talked about, you know, we are here to make homeschooling possible. Um, in, in every sense of that word, they work tirelessly to make sure that that happens um, through what their original intention was, is to protect homeschoolers who were coming under fire for the strange way of keeping their kids from the school to expanding into all kinds of things like consultation. We have a growing bilingual English as uh, second language um, uh, program, special needs, um, the transcript service. There's there's so many things at HSL, the outreach program. Um, there's many things that HSLDA is growing into as homeschooling grows. And as, you know, as we observe what the needs are of the homeschool community, HSLDA is there to help meet that need and to help make homeschooling possible. All right. For those of you who are interested, you can see me later or Lanissa or Rochelle. Um, if you are interested in um, HSLDA Online Academy, there's a, a $30 additional discount today because you've attended today's session. And uh, that would be your code for that. And I think that's it. Um, thank you for joining me. I don't know. I know we're supposed to be in a socialization uh, panel right now. So I don't know if you have any questions or anything um, before then. I'm happy to answer any questions. Or if you have any information that you want to share. Yes. I have a question. Um, sure. Is there any um, great software that you recommend or is it sufficient just to do like an Excel spreadsheet? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Question. Oh, so what the question was, is there a, a program for grading or is it sufficient to do it on an Excel um, form? Um, and, and I would say anything that enables you to do grading and to stay on top of it, if it helps you to do it on an Excel form, then that's, then that's, that's fine. I know that a lot of, there's a lot of um, planning, so, you know, homeschool planning software, like one of them is um, my uh, myschoolyear.com. That's one place that you can go because it will help you with grading, help you keep track of grading, help you um, plan out your curriculum. They will enable you to, uh, to log course descriptions. Um, and uh, just keep track of all these things that we're talking about. It helps make that that possible. Um, and there's another program called Homeschool Planet, Planet, you know, Homeschool Planet, which is another program that enables you to do grading and to keep track of your curriculum. You know. Um, Back when, it feels like back in the old days when I did it, I had both. I needed the, an online program to help me, but I also did things on a, on a sheet to keep me uh, accountable to grading. So whatever keeps you um, accountable and gets you to do it is what you should do. Anything else? Okay, well, thank you very much. I appreciate you spending this time with me. My name is Carla Fuller. Um, if you did think of something and you wanted to ask a question, then you can reach me at HSLDA. Um, and the number is 540-338-5600. And uh, you can reach me there. So thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys. And God bless you in your homeschool journey. Thank you. And I'm mad that my slides didn't show. But anyway. <laughs>
What about socialization? You could tell them that your kid is going to be the next president and that they just, you know, uh, qualify to attend Harvard. It does not matter what you say. The next statement will always be, what about socialization? If you have heard that, at, if you're homeschooling and you've heard that at least once, would you raise your hand? All right. And what you say afterwards is what we're going to be talking about. And I don't know if there are any um, quick fix answers to this. We're going to begin because we want to be um, um, cognizant of our time. And so I have here the beautiful uh, Dr. Rochelle Somerville. I'm Lenissa James. And the beautiful Vicki Tillman will be joining us in just a moment. And we are thrilled to talk about this topic. So before we get started, we do want to get some context of how many people you're homeschooling and how long you've been at this homeschool journey. So I'm going to pass the mic to Dr. Rochelle so she can share. Uh, let's see. I have six children and I have been homeschooling for 15 years. And so socialization is not an issue. <laughs> and my friend here, Lenissa, she has seven, right? So when we get our kids together, socialization is not an issue. <laughs> Wonderful. So about how many times have you heard the question? I have heard, even with my six, I still hear the question, what about socialization? Um, and I assure you that it's not an issue. As a matter of fact, when I first started homeschooling, um, you, hear, you still hear it quite a bit. And the reality is, is that when you homeschool, you actually have to pull back from the amount of socialization that you that you get your kids involved in um, because, you know, you start to hear the noise, you know, and you start to get nervous a little bit. Okay, well, maybe I do need to do something. And then you look for all these things and I started to look for co-ops and this. And, but as soon as you leave that house, the whole day is gone. You know, you may just go to a co-op for one hour, but once you take your kids out the house, it's like that whole resettling thing. Um, the day is gone. And so, um, but socialization is, is, is definitely not an issue. So my uh, first name is Lenissa, and I have seven children from ages 24 to six. Um, I am now still homeschooling just four. We're almost at the halfway point. Yes. I told my son if he would go ahead and start his curriculum now, I could get to the halfway point. Um, but socialization is a question that people ask, and it has nothing to do with the size of your family. Uh, they could be uh, perfectly interacting with each other, and people still want to know what about socialization. Really, what they're saying is, what about the other kids that are not family members? How do homeschoolers interact? And I want to be honest that um, when I first started homeschooling almost 17 years ago, I clearly was the only person on my street. I dare say I was the only person in my whole development with over 600 houses. I felt like I was the only person on the planet because that's how you feel until you begin what I call koinonia, that fellowship process. And it's already begun for you. If you're here or if you're watching, you're in a community of other homeschoolers. So now you are not alone. What I have found is the socialization is not the issue, is how you teach your children how to communicate, how you communicate, how you build relationships is really the answer. Because there are people all around us all the time, right? You may go to one homeschool event and there are people around you. How do you exchange numbers? How do you meet back with that person? What does that look like and all of that? So we'll talk, but meanwhile, I want you to meet our newest panelist, Vicki. <laughs> I'm Vicki Tillman from Seven Sisters Homeschool.com and National Homeschool Advocacy also. And I have chocolate and I would love it if everybody just takes some on their way out today because I don't want to drive home with it. Um, so I have five kids. They've all graduated. Um, when my kids, the oldest ones, went off to college, they were the first homeschoolers at their college, they thought. And then my, I remember my oldest son calling me up and saying, so I was sitting in a study group and someone came out of the closet that they were homeschoolers. 
And then a couple of other of them look at each other and say, you too? You know? <laughs> so in those days, it wasn't as common. Now what colleges are doing are, is recruiting them because they have found that homeschoolers, by and large, have learned the life skills of how to be good people and how to talk to the new person at church and how to take responsibility for leadership and how to serve in their community. That's what socialization is. I love that. Wonderful. Carla, did you want to lead us on something? Did you want to no, introduce yourself? Well, no, I just, so I'm Carla Fuller. I'm one of the high school consultants with HSLDA, and it looks like the ladies have already uh, gotten started. Um, but I, did, I don't know if anybody talked about a definition of what um, socialization is and that you are learning how to relate to others but you're also associated, uh, socialized to other things. You're socialized to values and you're socialized to ideas. And so I want to ask the ladies, how do you think homeschooling is, um, it equips you to be able to socialize your children to those important things? Homeschooling gives you the time. Um, I, I will tell you that um, we're in such a, you, you heard the expression, the hurried child. A hurry, child. We're in such a hurry. Uh, we don't have time to exchange numbers, to get to know each other, to plan another outing. And so homeschooling has allowed our family to um, move at God's speed. And God wants us to be, you know, connected. You know, I, I'm excited to meet so many of you here, um, whether you're online or whether you're live. I think we need to make time for that. And so to make a long story short, that's who we've become. We've become the family that recognizes, like you said, there's a new kid here or um, excited that we're going to a new homeschool group or um, connecting with other people. I think so. Homeschooling has assisted me. I don't think we paid attention to that so much before. You just kind of had that harried life. Now it's, um, it's, it's very noble to be connected with other people. I do. Um, uh, you know, relationships are so important. And I think it's something that is um, becoming less and less uh, a priority for people um, in society. And I think this is this is some of the issues that we are seeing today. And so this is a priority in my house. Um, we do a lot with understanding the perspective of others, we stop our day and we literally, as we watch things that are happening in society, we talk about how our actions impact others. Because I think that's really, really important, especially for young people. Um, because I think right now we're living in a society where it's all about me. Um, and so we don't take enough time to to think about others. Um, and so for us, it's really, really important in our house to really, really take on the perspective of others, not only to, from a God perspective, but to also consider our actions and how it impacts others. Because I think that's really, really important in terms of dealing with relationships. One of the things that Lanessa mentioned is that our kids are around people all the time. You know, they're in the neighborhoods, at the, the grocery store, whatever. And so the other thing is that socialization for homeschooling children is more natural and it's organic to how they'll actually, you know, be living their lives. And one of the things that we all know once we get to a certain point is not everybody's the same, right? Everybody is different. And so it teaches them about how to deal with people across age, across race, across ability, across ideas you know um you know we're a christian family you're not always going to encounter people who share that same conviction how do you interact with them and i think one of the problems we see sometimes with a more traditional environment is that everybody is to socialized to be the same and difference is punished in a way and um and so i think that's something that's very very important to consider with homeschooling uh, another thing I want to ask is about sibling relationships. How do those um, relationship between sibling and also relationship between parents and child, how does that help with the socialization process? I'll start real quick, but I'm going to pass it down to the mom with seven. So, so. I, 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 I did. And, you know, there are there is no such thing as a perfectly peaceful house all the time. So if somebody ever tells you that, they're, they're it's not the truth. But we can have some principles. We can have some ideas. And to socialize our children on being respectful of each other and teaching them the values of, you know, you start in the, in the 
being Christ-like by loving each other and, and treating each other kindly and then um, and nudging them when they are, are not doing that. So the, the good news is if you take the long view, by the time they're 24, they're all best friends. Right. So yeah, just uh, hold on to give them training and the expectation, the value, the socialization, which is socialization is passing on those values. That's right. And, and so you give them the value of respect and loving each other, they'll act it out at least by 24. <laughs> so there is hope. There, there's hope. There's hope. Yeah, so she asked about the relationship. Uh, you know, I shared about being a, having a background with the Myers-Briggs type indicator and understanding that that will look different for different personalities in your home, you know, the introvert versus the extrovert and building relationships. Like, for instance, I know that when it's time for me to really connect with my introverted kids, I really have to slow down. You have to slow down. You have to sit down. You have to get into a, a posture where they're comfortable with speaking with you because, you know, my introverted kids don't want to kind of talk on the go. They, they want a, a setting where they can have privacy. How about that? They don't even want to talk with other people or around. So I think that when we look at the mother and child, right, or the parent and child relationship, I think we need to be mindful of the needs of the people, right. um, of your children. And I also mentioned in my other workshop about me being more of a feeler, my mom being more of a thinker, and how our relationship evolved after we understood or took away the blind spots of the differences in our personality. Whereas she was um, taking care of things, executing things for our household, which was great. She felt like she was doing a great job, and I just needed a hug. Right. And understanding how that impacts the relationship with your children, um, being able to know what their love language is, right? And um, what I love is that homeschooling, I mean, that's a whole class. You can spend yes, a whole day yes. on love languaging and yeah. asking questions to find out what they enjoy and making their education delightful just by the relationship. And then kind of like Vicki said, you know, if anybody tells you that there's no conflict between sibling in the house, they'll lie about other things. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and there are. But what I love about homeschooling is that it gives me a platform in, to which to teach my children that this is the expectation that mama has. I tell them, I said, I'm all of your mothers. Do you think I enjoy hearing you argue? That's right. And they look back kind of puzzled like they had never thought of that. <laughs> it never crossed their mind. And, and, and it's so important that we have those conversations. I cannot tell you how many uh, people grow up their whole lives and they don't realize the pain they bring upon their parents by arguing among siblings. That's right. That's a whole book. Am I right? Yeah. That's right. So That's homeschooling has helped us address some issues that I know that if we were not in the speed of life that we would have not addressed. And you, then it becomes an adult conversation of how you're treating your siblings. So I actually enjoy that part. Um, uh, uh, let me tell you a little story. My son, uh, who's now 19, when he, um, he does a lot of, uh, of course, when you are homeschooled, um, the relationship is very different than traditional, uh, if you're traditionally schooled. My son has always been very, very close. Of course, he's the first. He's the oldest. And so he has a different job in the family. Um, uh, he's always been a uh, caretaker, but he's always been a mama's boy. Don't tell him I said that. Um, but he, so we've always been very close. And, and when he went off to college, um, he's still very, we're still very, very close. And uh, face, he FaceTimes me a lot, right? When he's right there at UMBC. And so every weekend he was coming home, right? And I was like, listen, you know, this has got to stop. <laughs> okay. Now we have got to cut the cord. You got to stay on campus. Okay, so he did that for about the first month, and my husband was like, "You got to stop picking him up." And I said, "Okay, I'm working on it. I'm working on it." Okay, so we finally got to the point where he stopped coming home, and so we would Facetime. You know, it was it was good time. We Facetime, and his friends would always they, they would start coming in the room. Like, Are you talking to your mother again? Is yes. that your mom? Yes. You know, but yes. but it wasn't a punitive thing. It was right. like. I never talked Absolutely. to my mom like that. I can't believe you're talking to your mom. Wow. I wish I did have a relationship like that with my mom. And it just warmed my heart yeah. to hear them say things like that, you know. Yeah. Um, but it also broke my heart at the same time that they said that they couldn't talk exactly. to their parents. Yeah. Okay. You know, so I cherish that relationship. And through it all, you know, I did a, I just did a workshop on curriculum. And what I say is, you know, I, I never homeschool for the intention of making geniuses. Right. 
my main priority was always to maintain the relationship. That's right. So we've had our highs and lows, but if nothing else, I have always made maintaining a relationship a priority. You know, one of the things that I've, you know, everybody loves their children. You know, nobody has children to not love them. But I think one of the things that homeschooling enables you to do is to manifest, express that love in a way that you don't always get to do when your kids are gone and they're away from you. That also provides more opportunities for you to have conflict because the closer we are to one another, the closer we are to sin against one another. But there may be also um, a need or an opportunity to say, you know, kind of like what Rochelle said, okay, academics have to stop today. We have a problem. There's something that we need to address, and it gives you the ability to do that, address it on the spot, teach them that skill, which they will take with them into every relationship they will have. It's uh, And it will also be something that they will likely repeat when they make their own families. I think that's how we that's how we transform from generation to generation and get better and get closer to the heart of God and what God's intentions are for family. I, I obviously am a fan of homeschooling and I really feel like, you know, it's one of the ways that that we can um, really do that. One of the things you guys talked about is mother child relationships. One of the things that I've seen and I've heard talked about kind of Rochelle, you can talk to your parents in a way that maybe other parents don't get. Are there boundaries and limits that you draw or do you feel like you know what it's a free-for-all how do you do that as you socialize your children to who you are and what your needs are as, as parents um i have always had an open door policy with my kids i've always been very transparent in terms of being open and um allowing them to know that it's a safe place um, to have discussions. And so with that, I think that um, always coming from a biblical standpoint and allowing them to express themselves, we, we've, we've been able to talk about very um, difficult things that you probably typically would not um, have discussions with your child uh, with, but coming from a biblical standpoint, it makes the conversation a little bit easier. Um, you know, we don't we don't come from worldviews or anything like that. And so coming from a biblical standpoint, we open up that Bible and then we we pull apart real, real difficult issues. And so um, we've always been very transparent about having open conversations with our kids. Yeah, this is a great question about the boundaries. Um, I know for my family, uh, my mom and I are close. And so I will call her Rosalind. Roz. And so they have seen the communication between me and my mother. And so it's hilarious to me when they say, Lenissa, Lenissa, or I hear them talking about me in third person. Nisser said, Lenissa said. And what warms my heart when I think about the early years with my mom and dad, when, you know, you, you didn't know them as well. Um, I feel, I feel known by them. And that's important to me. Um, I know that it, this can be a challenging topic because I know with uh, my mother-in-law, she wasn't as excited about them using her first name. So we have to be mindful of where it fits and where it doesn't fit. Right. You know, for me, I um, they use it with a lot of uh, adoration and endearment, although I did find out that they had another chat that was outside of the family chat. <laughs> so who knows? They could be talking about me right now. You know? <laughs> they all do that. But in terms of communication, that really helps. We do have a family chat, too, by the way, so that when there's a conversation that the whole family needs to hear, um, everybody can hear it at the same time. And it's also a way for kids to respond because um, I'll text something, you know, is it just your teens or is it mine? Is it just my teens that don't respond sometime when you oh, call them? Yeah. Oh, okay. So then I'll just have this whole blanket thing like, honey, just turn off all Wi-Fi cell phones. <laughs> then all of a sudden they come out of the woodwork. Now the woodwork. they're responding. You know, I'm thinking if the phone doesn't work, there must be a problem. Just turn it off. And so, you know, so we try to keep light of humor. I mean, it is a lot of uh, challenging places when you live with a lot of people like that. Right. I mean, it's 11 of us. Um, 
but we 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 take the side of a lighter side. We laugh to keep from crying. You know, we you know they post memes of crazy things that's going on, and it it really helps guys because you have to be a lot lighter about it. I think we've passed the stage of being uptight about it, and now it's funny. And even sometimes they'll make jokes out of you who you are too. You know, oh, yeah. like here she come, and then I'll see a meme of like a drill sergeant or yes, something come by. Yes. Yes. Just laugh at that stuff. Yeah. You know? yes. <laughs> yeah, I I really value what y'all said and I want to add yeah also yeah my kids had open door they could come to me anytime and talk about anything and that sometimes was heartbreaking or frustrating um, and sometimes joyful and the boundary I tried to keep was to remember that even though they were teens and and very deep thinkers and good conversers that they were always my kid and I was always the mom. So if I had mom kind of problems that needed to be solved, that wasn't their job to hear that. Right. And uh, so there's, you know, there were just some things that don't belong to children. And uh, when they're 32, they, they, they'll talk about those things. One of the things that I've noticed is that your powers of observation about each other increase, you know, when you're homeschooling, what you observe about your children, you use that as you educate them, as you interact with them, but also their ability to observe some things about us. And one of the things that I have found is the need to be uh, humble, to have humility as they reflect to me, you know, I talked in the last session about, you know, providing a mirror for your children. Sometimes they held up a mirror to me and I didn't always like what I saw. And so part of that socialization process is also esteeming their observations and their perceptions and be, having the humility to say, you know what, you're right, I'm wrong. I'm sorry to ask for forgiveness before the Lord and to say, I've asked the Lord to forgive me for this and now I, I ask you to forgive me. Have you ever had those moments where you needed to exercise humility as your children interact with you? <laughs> I didn't say you're sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And that's when you got five kids. When you got one kid, yeah. But the more you get, the the more opportunities of saying, "Well, I blew that one." You know, sorry about that. Um, that that really, we're just humans. But modeling for our kids that we can say, "I'm sorry," and I'm learning from this, or "I'm sorry." How did that make you feel? That's right. hard to hear, yes. uh, but it, it was important. And again, it's socializing them to be the kind of people that will help them be healthier as adults. That's right. I love that you said the the magic word healthier, right? Healthier as adults because um, we've had some. Um, transparent conversations about personality and conflict in ways that uh, I may have been offending them and unaware, right? And once you're made aware, you, you have to, like you said, have the mirror back up and take a look at yourself. And it's nice that in homeschooling and in any setting, but especially in homeschooling, you can look back and say that I, I hadn't intended to hurt you. That's right. I didn't mean to hurt you. Um, or mommy is sorry about how you're feeling, or maybe you're misunderstanding what I'm saying and giving them an opportunity to revisit their emotions as to why they're feeling the way they're feeling. Right. And if you have some teens, you're going to get a lot. Yeah. And if you're, if you're homeschooling a teen for the first time, meaning you're homeschooling and your child is a teenager, um, just prepare yourself for um, an outpour, right? Maybe yeah. even some emotional breakdowns right. because they've not had this open mic. They, had, they, had, they haven't had this access to you, right? Because right? maybe by the time in the evening, everybody's moving pretty fast to reset for the next day. So you have to provide that space where um, your teens... Or your students, even your younger ones, like Layla, she's a kindergartner. She says, Mommy, we're having a good day. Uh. <laughs> I love to hear that from Layla. That's what I know. And she hasn't quite articulated when there's a bad day, but there's times, you know, where she realized things are not going good. But she's my barometer. She's yes. like, It's been yes. a good day, Mommy. Yes. Yes. You know, whereas, you know, sometimes my teens, you also have to pay attention to behavior. Please don't just look for words That's because right. you may not get words. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there, are, there are some signs. You'll begin to observe your children in a certain um, physical demeanor right. or hiding out or right. long stays in the bathroom. Yes. You know, those teens, there, there are a lot of things that you would have never noticed right. that you will see, and it's their cry out for help. That's right. It's their, their, their request from attention for you, from you. 
I think Vicky said it best. Um, I think uh, a lot of it is humbling, um, you know, and when you do have more, you are humbled even more. <laughs> um, but it does give you the opportunity to um, to model, to model, um, you know, what you want for your kids. Um, of my crew, I have one girl um, who likes to point out all of my faults. <laughs> she lets me know everything <laughs> that I do. Um, but it, it's, it gives us a platform to talk. Um, uh, we don't always see eye to eye, so it definitely gives us a platform to discuss lots of different perspectives, um, you know, <laughs> about, you know, the way she feels, um, the, the way things are from her perspective. And, um, you know, so again, um, it, 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 it does allow me to model accepting um, you know, when she, when I have unintentionally hurt her. So whether I, whether I, whether it's, whether it's wrong or not, how she feels is how she feels. That's what I've accepted. So I've grown through, you know, her perspective. And so it's, it's always, it's always, um, I always say through homeschooling, I have learned more than I have taught. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I love that. I absolutely love that. I think it might be time to open up for some questions if anybody has any questions or if any of the panelists have another reflection they want to offer. So because all of us are going to be asked at some point, what about socialization? Yes. If, if I could give you the, the, the encouragement, yeah, to have a canned yes. response, like an elevator pitch, yeah. you know? Yes. All right. So the, the definition of socialization, if you look at a dictionary or a human development or psychology, sociology book, is the passing on of the morals and values from one generation to the next what better place That's right. than homeschooling. That's right. So when someone says, so what about socialization? And you say, well, socialization is passing on the, the morals and values from one generation to the next. And we are doing that through our church, our homeschooling, our family, our, our values, our service. How about your family? <laughs> Please do not come for Vicki and her I was children. Gonna say, Please. And take her address and email if you get the beat down because you yeah. responded that way. No. <laughs> yes. Having responses are important yes. and also yes. being conscious of how it makes you feel. Yes. Anything, I always say, anything that makes the hair stand up on your back, you should revisit more than once. That's right. And I know what it's like when I felt offended when people asked me questions about my homeschooling. Right. And that was something I needed to address. It wasn't their problem. It was mine. Right. And right. so I had to come to a place that I was comfortable and understood the response of natural questions when, you know, hey, you got all those kids, you figure out how it's happening, you know, no. you're going to get the one-liners. You're going to come across people who come for you instead of us, you know, as homeschoolers always ready to fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't want, and that's when you know you're not ready. When it, when it pisses you off real good, you just need more time. You need, you know, you need to do some mirror kind of role playing with yourself. <laughs> You know, because you're not there yet. You, you're not comfortable with that response yet. And so when people say, oh, seven kids, have you figured out how it's happening yet? I say, oh, yes, I figured out he was using my toothbrush. And I finally moved it over. <laughs> they never have a response to that. And I was like, I figured out he's using my toothbrush. And so when they come for me and they say, well, what about socialization, you know? And I tell them, I said, we have a whole lot of homeschool friends. We do. And that's the answer. We yeah. have a ton of homeschool friends. Yeah. I am trying to pick through which one of my friends I'm going to be with. Yes, yes. that's And right. that's my response. And they oh give you that stare. Yes. I said, and the pandemic made us go from zero to hero. Yes. You went that's from right. wondering why I'm homeschooling to how I'm homeschooling, that's and that's right. why you're watching. That's right. <laughs> here, here, yes. Rochelle, did you have anything else? Oh. <laughs> how do you top that? I mean, 
seriously, you, there's no, there's no topic, there's no topic that, except to say that our kids are being socialized, but so are we to the outside community, and being able to have those answers is extremely important. You had your hand up, I think. Should I stand, or am I fine? Can I Whatever stand? you're comfortable. Okay. All right. Um, so I expect this. I, I wanted to hear from the other ladies there. So going into homeschooling without an educational, formal educational background, if you have a degree or non-degree in something outside of education, does homes and you want to go into homeschooling either because of what the pandemic showed us? And I know as I'm a single parent, it showed me a lot um, that the school is not doing according to what I, my expectations were. Right. Um, so, um, without an educational background, how does, how can one who wants to come in, coming in perhaps as I discussed with my sister behind me as perhaps a tutor first versus, uh, an owner, or I'm not quite even sure how to call it. You know, you guys have are well established in your own um, organizations, companies. How how do you come in, like just fresh off, without an educational background, wanting to get into homeschooling? Yeah. I guess that that's a question. Yeah. Are Are you asking about how do you homeschool your child without an educational background, or you're asking how do you support? get into homeschooling? Not because my kids are almost out of are, are oh, in yeah. high school, so I, but I want to support. I want to be able support. to do this for other kids that are coming up because I didn't like what I saw. What I saw. Oh, I see. So I want to be able to do that. It's something that I've always wanted to be able to do, and now after seeing what I saw, I really want to do it now. So for other kids coming in, perhaps either as a teacher first, would that would be the first step versus coming in and say, "Oh, I have my homeschool, but I don't have an educational background." So. I, what would be the best way to do it without that formal training? Well, I mean, I think I don't necessarily know that that um, you need formal training. Um, it's more so what are you what are what are you bringing to the homeschool um, community? So, I mean, people bring different gifts to the homeschool That's community. Right. So it's right. not necessarily that you have to be an educator an educator by you know by trade. Um, I mean, think about what what are your strengths, what your gifts are, and and think about what you're bringing to the homeschool community and I guess that's that's what um, you would have to think about the, the and, and, uh, oh, sure. so whatever you're good at whatever you have a passion for other people will eventually acknowledge that that's right so if you maybe start volunteering someplace if you have a passion you know in that area it gives you it will start building uh, some credibility uh, so it's not necessarily about a degree, because if you're good at what you do, kids are learning, parents are happy, they're going to start telling other people about that. So one of the things I wanted to point out is that some states, I'm not sure about Maryland, have a stipulation about who can who you can homeschool, right? So they say, you know, we consider this a homeschool if you are homeschooling your own children. So there's that. But there are other opportunities for you, as they said, you know, to uh, to volunteer. You know, we we have a, a music teacher, um, you know, that that we um, that taught the boys guitar, piano, and drums. And he's like, you know what? I really want to be more involved in the homeschool community. I see that as a need. So we passed his information around, and now he's got his business is you know is is blowing up because of that. If you meet a homeschooler and find out what their needs are, what they what do you observe as the needs are in the homeschoolers that you know and if there's something that you can, you know, meet that need, then you can begin that way, I think. Anything else? Any other question? Yeah. Yes, I definitely will. Definitely. Yes. And he does go into he does go into Maryland. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so I just want to know, so like you're talking about coming with your gifts and your skills and is there a place for, so I work at a tutorial, I'm a guide there, and I want to advance in what I already know, like it's good and well that I have my own set of skills, but there's so much like that I've met so many different people here and that have so many great skills that I would like to harness as well. Is there a place for us as guides? Because I know it's, it's, it's you know, looking after younger people and raising them, but us as well, the learning shouldn't stop for us. So is there a place we can go to kind of get that experience of like learning skills like photography and music skills? And I mean, I'm trying to learn how to ride a bike. 
Oh, <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah. things like that. So we can also have those skills to teach our younger ones. Is there a place we can go to older people? You mean as a parent, how to yeah, continue? As a parent, as a guide, as a just someone who's interacting with young people. Yeah, we can we learn skills to go and teach them in our. Like, yeah. That's a very good question. I have that, an answer. There's a community college. Yes. They have a community education. Okay. All of the college uh, community colleges have a community learning uh, arm that's non-degree uh, based that you right. can go take classes in all kinds of different fields. And somebody who's an adult, I think, would start there. Yeah. Cooperative extension. You know, if you have any, any of those in your area, those are also the, the public library is a wealth of, of information about. And if you go to the community board, there's all kinds of people offering and advertising ways for you to learn photography, how to ride a bike, or you can put what your need is. I want to learn and then you will be amazed at, you know, you have to filter through <laughs> some of the responses that you get. But um, but, you know, if you have a desire, you know, to, to learn something, then, you know, the opportunity will come for you to add that. I, one of the best resources I found when there's a, a thing I wanted to teach my kids but I didn't know um, is I would go to the website edX, E-D-X, and they have courses from uh, like MIT and Stanford and stuff but chunked into little mini courses and some you can pay money for but they have lots of little mini courses like the best one I ever took didn't cost me a penny is 14 lessons on the science of happiness and it was just all the research on happiness for free all right, so it's edX also another um, suggestion for you parks and recreation mm, they send out a book just about good. every season yep you'd be surprised how much information you would get yes and you can ride the bike uh, that's, right. that's right that's right that's right yes very much one Anything thing i want to bring oh. up uh carla is um just because i work with so many homeschoolers i am seeing a bit of a trend that i wanted to put on the platform for discussion is how students are looking to go back to school because of socialization uh no other reason like it doesn't have anything to do with academics. It's just, hey, I'm sending my kid back now. The pandemic is quote unquote over, if you will. And uh, because they need to be socialized, right. you know, right. and I always say to my kids and I want to throw this out at you and hear from you ladies is that um, there's a fallacy that just because you're around 2000 people that you have socialization. That's right. That's right. That is a fallacy. In Say fact, <laughs> there is a fallacy that because you're around 2,000 yeah. other kids That's or people right. that there is socialization. Right. Even in the midst of this room, you would have to get up and meet somebody to, in order to qualify as socialization. That's Some of right. you have not moved at all, right? <laughs> so it does not move. It does not matter how many people are in the room. And, and, and even there are a lot of restrictions sometimes that... Um, traditional schools, you know, in terms of its socialization because of keeping safety, right? right. Um, you know, I had one student come in and said that they couldn't talk during lunchtime. I'm thinking, well, when can you talk? If you can't right. talk in the classroom, That's you can't right. talk during lunchtime. Right. When can you talk? Yeah. Um, so, um, so I say to you, I say to my kids, I tell them, I say, you know, it's not about a crowd but it's about the relationships. That's right. That's you right. know, I would much rather see you have one or two friends than to be around 2000 people and have none. That's right. Or 500 people and have none. That's right. Um, and you think about even yourself, how many friends did you take away from high school? That's right. And how many did you take away from college? That's right. It's always, you can count on one hand. And I remind my kids of that because when they're homeschooled, particularly if they're homeschooled their whole time, they have this fallacy that just because they see their friends walking maybe from the bus stop with, you know, 20 that's people, right. 10 people, that they have a bunch of friends. And that's not true. That's so um, I like to address what I call the elephant in the room on that particular topic. And I just wanted to throw it out to you guys. Did you want to say yeah, something? Well, and one of the things, too, when we went to uh, orientation for our son at Virginia Tech, one of the things that they said is that kids as Lenister said, they look at other people and the, if you say, how many kids do you think this person you know, has as friends? They always overestimate the number of friends they think somebody has when actually the kids that are graduating from high school now and going into college, they're the loneliest generation. They are, they're just, they're, they have access to each other on their fingertips and yet they're not connecting at a level that nourishes them, that helps them. And so, you know, with homeschooling, you have a unique opportunity to, to get to, to do something very different with your children. It's very, very important. Yeah. Anything else? 
Um, you mentioned um, something about co-ops and places where other homeschool parents can go. Is there a resource or a place to go to get that information to, to get started with something like yeah, that? Yeah, so I want to do a plug for HSLDA because our new um, uh, group services now has a, a arm. If you go to HSLDA, where we list groups in the area, and there are some listed there for the state of Maryland. I'm sure Shabak is on this list. Yes, uh, C uh, Calvary Gospel Home Educators is on this list. So you could go to Maryland, put your zip code in, and get a couple of those groups. Of course, you have to do your own vetting and go through, yes. you know, getting to know the groups, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's a place. And, of course, we're also going to have the same platform um, for Machi that will be unique to the state of Maryland that will support this effort of people trying to get connected to one another. I think it's very important. And we don't want it to be that you just don't have the group. You will be left with the names and numbers of the places that you have to reach out to because the programs are there. We're blessed and robust in homeschooling yes, yes. Uh, these days. And so what did, I, I think I Googled and it said something about 3 million people are homeschooling. Yeah, yeah. You got you to, gotta, you gotta, right? You got to know that there's somebody out there for you to connect with. So, um, and also making sure that your kids know that, and, and here's another thing I'm throwing oh, on the plate, yeah. is that because we live in a social media era, yeah that uses the word friend. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. They use that word friend very, very um, loosely. And then, yes. so sometimes kids think they have friends that they don't have. That's and so right. one of the things that we do in our homeschool is identify what a friend is. That's right. That's right. And uh, there's a relationship between friendships. And I think um, more today than ever before, kids need to understand what friend friend really means and you guys you know as homeschoolers we have time to help our kids understand that uh, and and it's important because then they can develop what i call healthy relationships that are real friends as opposed to hey i i, I you know i stalk 10 people on facebook and i call them friends that's right that's right? right so i think that that's important i think and that didn't exist by most of us i according to your ages out there you know we were all bc before computers Right. Am I the only BC? No. no. Yeah. Some of y'all other BCs in here before computers. So we have to be mindful of how that impacts the socialization thought based on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, et cetera. The, uh, the, the last thing that I'll make. Oh, please go. Uh, it's machimd.org. M-A-C-H-E-M-D dot O-R-G dot org. So machi dot machimd.org and there's a place where you can subscribe and you'll get um, uh, the latest and the greatest that website is going to be launching in just about a week the other the last thing I want to plug before we end is if you have an opportunity to go to uh, a homeschool convention or something along those lines where other young homeschoolers are going to gather take your children start them early let them see that they are a part of a whole mass of kids like you know because sometimes they can feel you know like I think it was Elijah who felt like he was the only one <laughs> you know right it's like you know no there is a whole slew of other people who are just like them and it helps build their own confidence so that they can have an answer if anybody challenges them about the way that they're their homeschool they have confidence and they they trust that what that we're leading in them into something that's really good because they see others who are doing it so I know sometimes parents like to go on their own it's like you've got kids and you're trying to look at curriculum but I think that it's really important to try to make sure that your children do that as often um, and as you can and the programs, too, because a lot of times they, they don't want to be in the programs. They'll tell you no, but a lot of times they'll come out and say, I met a friend. I'm like, really? Exactly. <laughs> in the program you didn't want to go to. That's right. <laughs> and take them to the <clears throat> legislative days when, when yes. Machi does that. Like, it opens their whole world for them. I, I just want, just if you'll take some chocolate on your way. Yeah, she's <laughs> Yeah, and take one of those little coupons that has a download. It's a coupon code for download for freebie writing guide because I'd like to download a bunch of those. So okay, and if there's nothing else, then thank you, panel, for sharing your wisdom and experience with everybody. Thank you. Oh, okay, yes. So the next um, thing that we have on the agenda is um, 
there is a giveaway. Um, that's going to be the, the section where we all signed up um, for um, uh, a giveaway and a wrap up session that's going to come up and then we will be done for the day.
Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> Is this doing okay? Yeah. Okay. All right, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. We are back together. We started here in the morning and we are finishing well. I hope you all look like you survived. Yeah. Yeah. A little less numbers, but it's okay. People have other things going on in one day, right? So definitely we have been, I've been blessed. I don't want to speak for you all. You've been blessed? Yeah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. That's a that's always a blessing. You came and got at least most of what you needed. And definitely reach out to all of us. We are still very accessible. Um, if not through HSLDA, definitely through other avenues. Def reach out to us, okay? The speakers are available uh, to support Vicki, BJU. We got a, a number of them, and you all have heard from them today. So before we do our giveaways, all right, does everyone have a raffle? Ticket? Yes? Okay. If you don't, then you'll raise your hand, please. Now, before we get going, we do need you to pull out your phone. We need you to go to scahomeschool.net, please. And there is a survey. We will give you about three, four minutes to fill out the survey, please. Surveys are those things that people may not want to do, but it actually helps us get qualitative data on this whole event and to know what we need to improve upon. S is, S is in Sam, C is in cat, A is in apple, homeschool.net, homeschool.net, SCA, homeschool.net. So if you're just coming in, you get a raffle. Please fill out the survey. We want to know also, I think one of the questions on the survey is, how did you find out about? Because we advertise all over social media and radio and Shabbat did a lot. So we just kind of want to know what was effective. About two more minutes, I guess, and then we'll be ready for the giveaways. Are giveaway people ready? Yes. yes. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. We we roll in this train. We gotta come. We gotta bring it into the station. It's the station's right there. I know. The station's right there. We just gonna roll it on in. Come on down if you have giveaways. I have two giveaways, but mine are right here. So anybody else giveaways? Yeah. Well, you got yours. You don't need to bring all that down. You think? Okay. You need a raffle ticket? Right there. Uh, NHA, what's the question? Oh, it's done. The raffle uh, yeah, is closed. So. Oh, it is. Okay. If you all can come over. I guess it doesn't matter. Both sides. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let me know when you finish. We we got about one minute, and then we're gonna go ahead so we can get you all out. I know we ran over a bit, but um, we don't want to continue running over. But it's been good. You know how when it's you run over a little bit, it's really good. But then you run over, run over. You're like, okay, all right, go. All right, everybody finished survey. I still see a few people. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Who has the, you have the, okay. All right, who's drawing? Who's going to? The person, whoever is given away can just draw. Okay, let's roll. Yes, let's Yay. roll it. All right, so Shabbat is giving away a tablet. Wow. Woo. Everybody have a ticket on this morning. Okay, let's go. Ready? <laughs> the number is 571-237.
Yes. Okay. We have. Angie, you ready? Choose. Yeah, no, choose her. Choose. Yeah, choose. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, it's her. Her number is 571223. All right. All right. Yeah. Woo. You can take it, Angie. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, Miss uh, BJU, Miss Belinda. Five seven one two one